Happy Friday, everyone. You know what that means, another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. Now, if this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. We're super happy to have you here. The way this works is really simple. On your screen, you'll see a chat box. In that chat box, you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Now, sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not. But either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care and sometimes life topics. But guys, as always, we're coming to you guys live on YouTube as the primary platform, but you can also reach us on Meta, on Facebook, on Instagram, and also on Twitter. For those of you that are on, on Instagram, you're not going to see uh, the like the like anything that I share on the screen, I and mean, tonight's a good time to get up there and, and actually come over on YouTube or Facebook to be able to see this, because I'm going to show some really cool lawns and show you the guys the current state of my my personal golf course lawn. So if you guys want to be part of that, feel free to jump over. But no, no, at any rate, if you uh, ask a question, I'll be sure to switch over to uh, to make sure you guys feel part of the show. Make sure you're included as well. All right. So guys, it is going. Uh, it's going well. It's Friday night, uh, April. Getting into the second half of April and lawns are waking up. I'm getting lots of great pictures from you guys. Um, some folks with the cool season lawns are really killing it. So I got some really cool lawns to show uh, show you guys this evening. And also, again, I'll show you guys the state of, uh, of my lawn. Pretty happy with how it's doing this season. Some stuff I've been playing with has been going pretty well. So I'll, I'll keep testing it and I will share with you guys maybe later on in the season once I, I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with the results. All right. So let's see who we have in the live stream this evening. To get the show started, uh, first up, we got uh, Clayton uh, Jefferson saying, Ron, I sent you an email earlier, uh, same as Jason, also the results of the S of the uh, Essential G Carbon Kit, no worries, I'll get to that. And then LJ says, hey, Ron, how are you? I'm doing well. Can't complain, man. The lawn is doing well. I have been, um, you guys, if you guys follow the live stream last week, you guys know I was surprised with a gift from the nice folks at Real Rollers. Uh, they... Um, they gave me one of the new Revolution 26s, so I've been putting it through its paces this week, mowing the front lawn, mowing the back lawn with it. 
um, making it do what it do, and overall, pretty impressed, very happy with it, you know? So uh, I'll show you guys a picture here in a little bit of what the back line looks like. Also got a really cool gift. Um, this, if you guys notice, normally there's an empty spot back here, but Higgy Pop, um, you know, he's a woodworker as a hobby, and he sent me this really cool, um, you know, wooden, I can take it down and show you guys. This really cool wooden American flag that he made. Uh, so thank you so much for that, Higgy. Um, it's pretty awesome. I've already got it um, up here. Um, hang in, make sure I don't drop it. So again, I really, I really do appreciate the uh, the kind, the kind gift, the kind gesture. So really, really cool stuff. All right. Um, so next up, we have Jason Harrison. So the same question that Clayton had. It's an interesting question around lawn leveling because tis the season for leveling lawns, right? So he says, hey, Ron, I have a leveling project scheduled for May 10th. I will be iterating as part of the project. Um, would you still drop Humic Max on May 1st or delay until the aeration is done on the 10th? Um, I would wait. I would wait the week. I would wait the, I'd wait the 10 days and, and do it as part of it um, because I'm a big fan of, of putting down a fertilizer of some sort as part of your top dressing project, as part of your leveling project. And, um, you know, a, a week is not really going to kill you. And, and the fact that you're going to aerate the lawn is going to be opened up. Like you're going to be fast tracking the, that nutrient into the soil. It's going to help the lawn recover that much faster. So if it were me, I would wait the 10 days and do your fertilizer after the aeration as part of your uh, your lawn leveling project. So good stuff. Um, again, best of luck with the, with the leveling project. I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit envious. I don't have mine scheduled quite yet, but I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun out there, Jason. So, uh, you know, keep us posted. And as always, I can tell everyone that's doing any kind of major lawn renovation, an important thing is take pictures. So take pictures of how the lawn looks now and then take pictures of how it looks um, afterwards. You know, pick pictures of before, during, and then afterwards because it's never really going to look the same way again once you're done with it. Like, like, like leveling a lawn is pretty transformative. So... You want to document it. You want to be able to, to be able to you know recognize how far you came, and uh, and really appreciate the fruits of all your hard work. So, great stuff. Again, keep me posted. And um and thanks for the question. Uh, Clayton, same thing. Same thing uh, goes for you. I know you had a question about leveling. I know you're going to be leveling your lawn soon. And yeah, same thing goes. I would um fertilize as part of that humic max. The fertilizer you asked me. So Clayton's question was a little bit different. So he said, what fertilizer would I use as part of, um, as part of the lawn leveling project? So after you aerate, what would I use? I would, I would go with Humic Max. If you guys have been watching any of my content for any period of time, any of my lawn leveling videos in the last few years, like this has been my fertilizer of choice. Um, it's got a higher percentage of quick release nitrogen in it than, um, than the other options uh, here. So which is going to help, again, the lawn's going to help, help it recover faster. So that is what I would go with. Humic Max, the 1608. Clayton, in case you don't have it, I will um, drop a link here in the chat uh, for you, so you will uh, so you'll have that. But yeah, that's this is this is what I would roll with. I think I think Jason's going to be using the same stuff, but uh, that's what I would use. Good stuff. And if you guys want to see, so here's the thing, guys. I, I've got the new uh, the Revolution Twenty Six again. Been been beating it up, trying to see if I can break it. Just you know, put it put it and you know, make make it work. I don't want to make it just as a, as a garage queen. I want to see what it what it can do. And uh, you know, it's it's I've mowed quite a few times this week just because. And this is a picture of the lawn literally 90 minutes ago. So before, right before the show, um, before the show started, a little bit before the show started, this is the current state. So you can see there um, in the background on the patio, if you look, if you squint a little bit, you'll see the Revolution 26, the black and red, Bulldogs colors on the patio. And it, I got to tell you, the, 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 lawn, the color of the lawn's looking really good. The mower's doing a really good job. Overall, a uh, very very happy with um with how it cuts it's it's the thing that they did as far as balancing it like moving the engine I think it shifted the engine to the, to the right and then added some plates to, to balance the mower out it cuts really well it cut well before like the version that i i got to play with in august of last year august september of last year but the final edition the one you guys are all getting is it's a it's a peach it's a really nice nice bit of kit it does a really good job um really good job cutting so uh, you guys are gonna be pretty happy with it literally just for testing purposes all this week all this week, what you're seeing there, that's been cut with the Revolution. So in both, when I've cut lengthwise or I've cut, um, you know, to and from the house, um, those stripes are courtesy of the new uh, the new mower. So it's uh, gets it done, I'd say. All right, next up, we have Jake uh, Pierre. Uh, Jake Pierre, he says, I've got a super simple question about Bermuda types. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go. 
This could be good. It could, could be good. Could be bad. We'll see how this goes. All right. Jake says, his question is, my neighbor has a 419, 2 by 419 lawn, and I love how green and thick it is. This is my first year real mowing and second year with a lawn altogether. I'm wondering if I can get results with common similar to 419. You can get common Bermuda to look really good. I mean, they are like common Bermuda and 2 by 419 like they they look visually different. Like the the um, the leaf of common is a bit thicker. Um, it doesn't grow, in my opinion, not quite as tight or as dense as Tiffway. Um, but to you to answer your question, yes, you can get an amazing stand of grass, even though it's common Bermuda. The big thing is is you're gonna you know a good nutrient program. You've already got a real mower, so regular mowing is gonna help. Another thing that can help too with common is um is consider um using growth regulator. So uh, Primo Max is um do I have it here? I think I got a bottle here is the, the PGR, the growth regulator, regular, growth regulator that I like to use. Um, and again, this will work on common Bermuda just fine. The thing with common, if you're certain that's what you have, right? If you're certain that you definitely have common, um, the rate for Primo with this is uh, quite a bit higher than what you would use on hybrid Bermuda. So just make sure you consult the label. Um, as far as helping you out with that, as far as guidance goes, so you get a good result when using Primo on your common Bermuda lawn. Um, we've got a blog post all about plant growth regulator and um, common, of course, is mentioned there. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a link here in the chat uh, to that. I think you get some value out of it. But um, but yeah, it's um, to, to ask your question. Yes, you can absolutely you can absolutely make common look great. So um, as far as application rates, which I think is down here, um, you can see for common is quite a bit higher than what you're going to be using for um, for hybrid Bermuda grass, but you can you can make it look awesome. Again, read this. It's a short, it's a relatively short blog post. Lots of great info in it, and uh, it it I, I, that's something that I would incorporate into your program because um, it is going to help. It's really good. It's going to help the, the visual appearance of the turf. So just something to uh, to, to keep in mind. Uh, Jake, again, thank you for being a new viewer. I saw earlier you said this is your first time on the live stream. So hopefully you are enjoying it. Hopefully it's a fun, fun, interesting show for you. And yeah, a big thing is uh, feed it and mow it. Feed it and mow it. Mow it and feed it. And the, most, the thing that most people do not do often enough or do enough of, in my opinion, on their lawns is mowing. So as long as you keep up with that, keep your equipment sharp and keep it cut, it can look really, can look really, really good. And again, you got a real mower, so you're already, you're already ahead of the curve as far as getting that common Bermuda to look its uh, its absolute best. Um, one more thing I'll do for you while we while I got you here is I will send you um, our nutrient program or as far as our month to month application calendar, which you might find useful. So there you go. You got a, a blog post on growth regulator. You got one on with a calendar. So you should be all set. Any other questions? Feel free to let me know. All right. Next up, we have our fragrance journey um, saying. Uh, what's up, Ron? I missed last week's stream. You missed a good one. It was a really good one. We had Leon from Real Rollers. He's, so I didn't get to hit you up with the Roll Tide. You know, here's the thing I've come to realize. I realize this is not going to stop with you folks from Alabama, but I, I think we can form a truce, right? You know, Alabama's in the SEC. Georgia's in the SEC. In recent years, we've been better. Um, but, you know, we're still in the SEC, so we're still all, you know, brothers and sisters in football. So I think, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll allow this to stand. I'll just, you know... I'll just say bless your heart and just just hope and pray that one day you'll come around and realize you know that that black and red is where you uh, where you need to be. But you know, appreciate you coming to hang out our fragrance journey. Hopefully you're having a great Friday. And again, if I can if I can help with anything, let me know. Uh, Jackie Bears up next. Just have have a great live stream, everybody. Let's go, Ron. Yeah, man, it's going to be a great week. Um, you know, this this past week has been a lot of fun as far as working on the lawn. I've gotten some cool pictures from. Um, some folks in the live stream. Hopefully they're here. I'm gonna wait until they pop in to be able to show you guys some of their lawns. But uh, but yeah, the front and rear lawn this year are doing are in rare form. Rare form. Okay, so we have a question here from Jay Crawl says, how do the height of cut compare on the revolution compared to the Greens Master? I'm learning how to real mow with an older tri-cut. LOL. Uh, so yeah, so the the height of cut range on the revolution is um, it's from a quarter of an inch, I think up to one and a half inches. Um, so pretty much it's, it goes lower than you want to mow with it and it goes higher than you'd want to mow with it. So, um, the, the sweet spot really is set up for, um, three quarters of an inch, 0.75 inches. That's where mine is set. It, and it does a great job there, you know? So as far as cut produces a great cut, it, um, and it's, as far as the range, it's comparable 
to what you would get, say, out of a true cut, but it cuts better than a true cut. So, um, so yeah, as far as the greens mower, my, um, my greens master goes from a quarter of an inch up to 1.25 inches, but mine has the 11 blade reel in it. So really three quarters of an inch, 0.75 inches is, about, is really as high as you wanna go with that mower and that reel combination. So, um, so yeah, pretty much for all intents and purposes, they're all, you know, the, the, the greens master, um, the greens master um, in, and the, the revolution can cut within the same range. Currently the greens master is set to, to five eighths, but I'm gonna run it at, at um, 0.75 here starting next month. So I'm just, I've been running a little bit low here to start the season out, but it's gonna be at five eighths um, going, starting in May, going on throughout the, I'm just gonna be at three quarters starting in May, going throughout the rest of the season. So good stuff, man. Hope you have any other questions, uh, you know, feel free to, uh, to, to drop me a line. All right, we got a couple of super chats. Let me get these uh, knocked out really quick here. Um, first of all, we got one from Mr. Jake Pierre Thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat, sir. Super chat yes, thanks for sharing all the knowledge. Definitely making a difference in my lawn. Awesome. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. I'm just sharing advice. You're really making the difference on your lawn because you're doing the work. You know, that's really what it is. You can watch all my content all day long. And I promise you, if you watch my content and do nothing, your lawn will not get better. So do not sell short the amount of work that you are putting in and making your lawn awesome. All right, next up, we got Mr. Shedrick G in the house. Super chat He says, uh, Super chat received. Um, my GM1000 is still being serviced. And I'm dry, still driving the Honda, which feels like a low mileage rental. Well, you see, here's the thing. You said a low mileage rental. So given the, you, you are putting some respect on the Honda's name at least, right? I mean, you didn't say a high mileage rental. So that's that's good. That's good. You know, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. I mean, here's the thing. Honda, I'm not sure which one you have, but if it's a Honda, the, um, oh, HRX, is that, I think, is that the, the, the nice mower that they make um, in rotaries? It's a nice mower. And then finally, we got another super chat. This one is from um, Long336. Super chat for C. He says, are there any Bermuda types that do okay in partial shade? So great question, Long336. Uh, it depends on what you, deter what you define as partial. So Bermuda grass like does not like shade, does not do well in shade, full stop. There are some cultivars, like, you know, some folks will say that Tiff Tough does a little bit better in shade than say 419, but it still needs a lot of direct sunlight. So um, what I would tell you is if you have a, an area of the lawn that gets less than eight hours of direct sunlight every day, uh, at least during the growing season, it's it's not gonna do well. You're gonna, you're gonna struggle to have the lawn uh, look its absolute best. For example, if you look at my back lawn, right? This is, um, this is actually taken this afternoon. You can see that it gets all the sunlight. There's nothing really between the sun and the lawn, you know, so it gets tons of sunlight and it looks, um, you know, it looks, it looks good. It looks good because of it. So the more sunlight you give Bermuda, the better it will look, the better it will look. Now, if we compare that to the front lawn, I can actually show you that. I'll show you where it's a little bit of shade. The difference a little bit of shade will make with Bermuda grass. So this is the front lawn this afternoon. Um, you can see this gets plenty of sunlight, but then we're going to move over here. So I can hit pause at the right moment. So far looking good, looking decent, looking okay. But keep watching as we get closer to the shrub. I think as I get closer to the shrub, you're really gonna see it. As we get closer and get closer and get closer. And right there. Okay, so you see to the right part of the frame, you see how the grass is so much thinner, it's quite as noticeably thinner there than the rest of the lawn. And that's only, you know, one, two, three, three feet away from that shrub. And that shrub really isn't casting that much shade. You know what I mean? I mean, there's you know, for most of the day, the lawn is getting plenty of sunlight, but just that little shrub, that little bit of shade that it's causing is enough to, to make the lawn, make that part of the lawn lag behind uh, the rest of it. So uh, shade in, in Bermuda, like I always tell folks, shade in Bermuda are like ice cream and mayonnaise. They just don't go together. So a little bit of shade, if it's a little bit of shade, you know, throughout the day, it's, I mean, it can, will it die? No, but will it look its absolute best? Um, also no. So I, you know, you saying, um, partial shade is kind of subjective. I, I, don't, I don't have a picture of what you're talking about to be able to say that, but I showed you a, an example of how just a, a four foot shrub in my front lawn, how it will make a material difference in how just a couple feet away from the from the, the, the shrub, how the, the turf grass looks. So it makes a big difference. Um, I would avoid shade at all costs if you can, because you just, you're really just, you know, playing the game on hard mode when it comes to Bermuda grass, if you, um, if you do that, so. Hope that helps. Um, again, it's hard to answer your question without seeing the lawn, seeing the picture, but I would avoid shade. It's not, it's not a, Bermuda and shade just don't go together. 
All right, and Cedric, don't think I forgot about you, man. Thank you so much for the super chat. You are the high super chat of the evening, I believe, at this point. So there we go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Appreciate all the support, sir. All right, next up, we have, um, we got Fresh Apples in the house. We got Robert Thomas in the house saying, what's up, everyone? What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well. And the next up is Fresh, ap fresh Apples. What's going on, Fresh Apples? Thanks for coming, stopping by to say hello. I answered your email earlier about, you know, your renovation that you're thinking about doing. Oh, I, I think you sent me another one, but I haven't gotten to it yet. But um, but yeah, thanks for sending me the email, the questions about, about potentially working on your lawn. And then Higgy Pop, I'm sorry, uh, Jaber leading the charge saying, let's smash that like button, please. Let's do that. Please do that. It's always always a great way to support the uh, the channel. And then Higgy Pop's in the house. He's saying, uh, happy Friday, everyone. What's going on, Higgy? Again, I showed everyone your handiwork. So it's, it's, you can see, like I told you, it's going to be on the live stream. There it is. And if you guys want to see a better picture of it, I won't take it off the lawn again, off the wall again, but I took a picture right here. There it is in all its glory. Thank you so much for the awesome, awesome, awesome gift. Um, again, really awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's got a, it's got a special spot right there on the wall on the live stream. So everyone will see your, uh, your handiwork. So again, thank you so much. I really do, do appreciate it. All right, next up, we have LJ. He says, I put down fertilizer, um, insect control, and Milo. I don't have weeds, but the green up is very slow. Yeah, so if you use Milorganite as your, your fertilizer, I mean, uh, uh, it is going to green up a little bit slower than, say, a synthetic uh, type fertilizer, one that has more of a synthetic blend, like the Lebanon fertilizers that we carry. Um, you know, any kind of organic fertilizer, it's still going to green up the lawn, but it's, it's just going to work a bit slower than some of the synthetic options. There's other things too. I'm not sure if you did a soil test this year, LJ, to know if there's anything else that the, the soil might be lacking that could be holding you back a bit. Um, but, um, but yeah, if, if Milo's all you've used, I'm not surprised that you're getting a slightly slower green up than if you used again, something like Humic Max, because again, that just, that's just going to wake the lawn up. Um, a quite a bit faster than an organic, a strictly organic uh, a fertilizer will. So, uh, so yeah. But just we're still early in the season. It's only again we're just now in the second half of April. So the season's just really getting going. By this time next month, the lawn should be in a much better place if you uh, you stick with it. So I wouldn't worry too much. All right. Um, next up, we got a couple of questions here. Uh, from first one is I think it's from Shauna. What's going on, Shauna? She says, Ron, two questions. Question uno. Question number one. How long after putting down Turfplex and Nutrizolve is it rain safe? Um, I always tell folks four hours. Really allow it to dry. So spray it, allow it to dry, and then, you know, then you're good to go. Really, within four hours, um, most lawns will dry out, so you should be good to go. And then next, um, next is Essential G breakdown fast after it gets wet. Yeah, and it says, meaning does it start to melt away quickly like Humichar? No, it does not. Um, it's not a dispersible granule like, um, like, uh, like the, the technology that Anderson's uses in Humichar, but it does begin to break down as it gets wet. So yes, it's you can think of like a, how compost would begin to break down. It's similar to that. So it's not, it doesn't like just melt away like Humichar does, but it does break down as it um, as it's exposed to water temperature. Um, yeah, so hope that helps. Shauna, great question. And uh, and hopefully you're doing well. Now guys, as far as Turfplex, Turfplex is out of, is, gonna, is out of stock on the golf course lawn store and will be for the foreseeable future. Um, if you guys are looking for a substitute to, to Turfplex, um, what I recommend is go with Release 901C. It's, I've got a couple of questions about that this week ever since it sold out. Um, so if you guys are looking for a fertilizer to use in your spoon feeding program, you can use the same stuff that I use, which is Release 901C. So, um, so if you're looking for, if you're using Turfplex, it's sold out, don't know when it's coming back. Um, so 901C is what you're going to want to, uh, to go with. So. Hope that helps. Great question, Shauna. If you need anything else, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, next up is Colin. Colin says, what's up, Ron? Hope your Friday has been well. It has been, man. I can't complain. It's been a good Friday. It's been a good Friday, man. He says, tuning in as always for a great live stream. Yep, no worries, Colin. He also sent a picture of his lawn. I think I've got it here really quick. So this is Colin's back lawn. It's a, is it um, Paspalum? Um, is what, you, is what you're working with, um, Colin? It's still waking up but you can still see the stripe action. If you look really closely there, you can see it's um, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light from left to right. So you can see that the, the, the lawn is still coming coming into its own. Again, it's still early in the season, but uh, thank you for sending the picture, sir. And I told, uh, like I said, I told you earlier, I would share it on the live stream so everyone can see the current state of your lawn. But now Colin, here's the thing. With that now comes the need for updates, right? Because you know, a month from now, we got to see how the lawn's doing. We can say where it was before and where it is now. So be sure to keep us updated as far as how the lawn does. All right, LG's in Georgia. Yep, I mean, yeah, you're even in Georgia, you'll, it, you'll, um, the lawn will begin waking up. It should, it should 
you know, you give it time. It's still early in the season. I mean, a lot of folks, um, you know, you guys look at my lawn and say, well, your lawn is super green already. Why is my lawn lagging behind? You got to realize my lawn is, it's got years of, um, of monthly applications of essential G of, of granular biostimulant. Um, you know, I do a lot as far as cultural practices, as far as keeping, keeping the lawn, like keeping a lot of debris out of the lawn, all those things coupled with a good nutrient program, which I started, we're in still April, started last month in March, all those things put together help the lawn get to the state of where it is. And again, it's not even looking that great yet. I mean, this is, this is, we're mid April. Um, you know, that's still got a waste. That's what I even fully greened up. You can even see in the middle section of the lawn there, there's still parts of it that are still not hundred percent. If you look over in the background by Alex, there's a section there that's still dormant still, or still waking up. So the lawn's still not into its own yet. and still not thickened up yet. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's still early in the season. I guess what I'm trying to say. Don't, you know, don't be in a rush. There's still plenty of time. Uh, Justin Ennis says, I'm located in Phoenix, Arizona. What's going on, Justin? And then next up, we have Justin Judkins as a question. He says, uh, hey, Ron, I have some caravan left over from last season. Will that suffice for my spring insecticide? If so, would you recommend putting it out this month or next month? Uh, great question, Justin. So if you've got some caravan G left over, yes, you can put that out as your insecticide and fungicide app for your first fungicide app of the year. Um, you know, we're getting near the end of April. So if you want to put it out this weekend, you could do that. If you want to wait another week, that's fine too. And uh, what I would not do though is, you know, I recommend doing two fungicide apps, one in May and then one in June. What I would not do is apply Caravan G again in June because then you're going to be doubling up on insecticide and you really don't need to do that. So if you do Caravan now, and you're doing a second fungicide app in June, switch to Headway or Pillar SE. But as far as using what you got, by all means, go for it. No worries with that at all. It's a great, uh, it's a good, it's a great choice. Great, great choice. I mean, I, I use um, a Celeprin, but again, if you already got Caravan, why why would you not use what you've already got sitting in the garage, right? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. You don't want to waste it. Don't want to waste it. It's important. Don't want to waste stuff. All right, next up is Ozman. Um, he says... I'm new to the channel, about two weeks maybe, and in Georgia as well. I did a spike roller aeration, um, a triple action weed and feed about a month ago, uh, green and three mowing this season, trying tenacity for the first time. Cool. So, yeah, so you're doing a lot of the things. You um, you did aeration. Uh, you are you put out, like it sounds like, some kind of a pre-emergent with some post-emergent in it, okay? And then you're trying tenacity for the first time. So it depends. You're in Georgia. What kind of grass do you have? Because outside of fescue, you really don't want to use tenacity on the more common grasses that we have in Georgia. Like you, like our common, probably the most common grass in Georgia is going to be Bermuda and then followed by um, Bermuda, Zoysia. And then, you know, if you have, if you go to some of the neighborhoods in Atlanta, in Atlanta like where they, some of the older neighborhoods where there's a lot of um, like big trees, a lot of older, um, older neighborhoods, where they don't get a lot, where there's a lot of shade. In those areas, you'll see fescue lawns. Fescue is where you would use tenacity, but you really don't want to use tenacity on Bermuda or Zoysia. It's really designed for cool season turf grass, um, yeah, cool season turf grass and really um, centipede. You can use it on centipede as uh, as well. And St. Augustine if you're on a sod farm, but none of you guys are on sod farm. So for all intents and purposes, the only warm season grass on a residential lawn anyway that you really want to use tenacity on would be, um, you can use this for centipede for crabgrass control. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, if you're in Georgia, unless you've got a fescue lawn, um, I would take that bottle of tenacity and I would like find a nice pot on the shelf and just 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 put it there. Just let it sit there. Don't do not use tenacity on your Bermuda or Zoysia lawn. You're gonna give it a big ouchie. Don't uh, I, I'd recommend against that. Again, appreciate you being a new viewer watching the content. Um, if you do have a Bermuda or or Zoysia lawn, like I told you what not to do, I didn't tell you what to do, right? If you're looking for a herbicide um, that's safe for those grass types, if you're looking for broadleaf um, herbicide, I would go with Celsius. And then if you're looking for a herbicide to control sedges and poannua, then I would go with certainty. So these two, these two, you know, Batman and Robin, these two make up, I mean, what I think is a great combination for controlling weeds in warm season turf grass. Um, that's what you really want to be using on your lawn in Georgia um, instead of tenacity. Again, unless you have a, um, a fescue, a fescue lawn. Um, and we've got that under the weed killer section on the golf course lawn. So we have a kit that has Celsius, Certainty, Surfactant, and Dye. So you can get everything you need all in one go. And again, that is what I would be using. Not, um, not, not Tenacity. Uh, not Tenacity. Tenacity is not a bad herbicide. It's just not 
not right for our grass types that we have uh, mostly here in Georgia. So I'll, I'll help you out. Um, Osman, I'll drop a link here really quickly in the chat to where you can, uh, you can grab or at least see that kit that I'm talking, telling you about. And if you need anything else, he says, it looks like, um, he says, your brother-in-law says it looks like Augustine. Um, yeah, even to say, yeah, but even for St. Augustine, um, Celsius and certainty are really what you want to be using. You really, I mean, per the label, um, St. Tenacity is really not supposed to be used on St. Augustine um, unless it's a sod farm. And really the only thing, the only, let's just say you do happen to live on a sod farm, right? The only thing that I would really use Tenacity for in St. Augustine is if you're trying to control crabgrass. Everything else, I would use a different product. I would use, again, Celsius or um, or or Certainty. So um, so I hope that helps, Osman. And um, here is the her link to the lower herbicide kit I was telling you about. You need anything else? Let me know. All right, cool. Moving on, um, we got Stephen Thompson in the house. He says, um, happy Friday, Ron. UFC 300, shorty live up to the hype. Looking forward to getting the new revolution next few weeks. Mm. Any tips on leveling after replacing sprinkler heads? I know I mentioned swelling in my yard last summer. Come to find out the seals are leaking from getting sand in them, ha ha. Uh, yeah, so great question, Stephen. What I would say is, um, first of all, yes, UFC 300 did not disappoint. Like the like um, um, Holloway's knockout was insane. That will never be duplicated, not anytime soon. It's an awesome way to end it. Um, and as far as tips for leveling, yeah. So if you're going to be leveling the lawn and you need to replace sprinkler heads, personally, I would replace the sprinkler heads prior to doing the leveling work. Because what you don't want to do is get out there and spend all your time and level the lawn, get it all nice and smooth, and then go dig it up and, you know, pull the sprinkler heads out. And, and you know, you're going to, I mean, either you, you try and do a pretty good job getting all the dirt and everything back in, it's still not ever quite, you know, exactly the same. So I would replace the, the irrigation heads, if you can, the sprinkler heads prior to doing the leveling work. And then outside of that, when you go to do your leveling, two things you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna want to mark them, so you got little flags and mark where the sprinkler heads are. And then second, uh, get yourself some of those little, um, like uh, they're like rubber or polyurethane, like uh, dog frisbees, and put those over the irrigation heads. So whenever you top dress, you can literally spread sand right over the top of them, and you avoid getting sand down in the sprinkler heads. I learned this the hard way, because like you, I've had to replace sprinkler heads over the years. But, um, you know, getting, doing that little trick, getting some of those, those, um, dog Frisbee, silicone Frisbees, I still can find them for you really quick and I'll link it here in the chat. And you just drop those on top of each sprinkler head. Allows you to, to, to still level the lawn to get a great job doing, do a great job doing it, but you keep sand out of, um, out of the, um, out of the, the irrigation, um, out of the sprinklers, which is important. Let me see, silicone, uh, dog Frisbees. Yep, I think... They come like in six packs. You can get them in like in multiple packs. Yeah, here we go. So like one of these guys right here. I'm gonna link them here in the chat for you. Get yourself a pack of these. It's gonna set you back a whole ten dollars. I think you can afford it. Get you get you some of these and um, put those down over the irrigation heads, and that you'll be good to go. And outside of that, just have fun. Take pictures before, during, and after, and uh, enjoy it. Next up, Optic Cyclic. He says, you're Ron, I miss you over the winter. I, I miss you too, man. I, I think it's the first time I've seen you this season. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I think so. I think I'm right. He says, I'm trying to cut out lateral spread. I'm, tr I'm trying out a lateral spread, tall fescue perennial rye grass mix. Fingers crossed these cultivars are worth the money. Huh, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because normally those are um, like fescues, more of a bunching type grass. That'd be cool. If it spreads laterally, that would be uh, pretty interesting. Take pictures of it, man. Be interesting to see how that, uh, how that works. Keep us posted. Jimmy Miller's up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron. You sound better. Looking forward to the night's stream. I will do my best not to disappoint, Jimmy. So hopefully you are, um, you are, and th again, thank you for coming to hang out. And hopefully I, you know, my voice holds up for the show uh, tonight. All right. Um, next up, um, I guess a different Jimmy Miller is, um, is up next. He says, um, good evening. Actually, no, I got Ibra, uh, Ibra D here first. He says, hi, Ron, and everyone received my items. Thanks for fixing my dress mess up. Um, I will get started on my spoon feeding program. I'll update with pictures. Cool, no worries. No worries at all. Thank you for letting us know soon enough and we you got you taken care of. All right, now, Jimmy Miller number two with a question. He says, good evening, Ron. What is your opinion of fertilizers that contain NPK and pre-emergent? For example, Dimension 1804 and a 0.164 dithiopair. How does a 0.164 dithiopair translate into pounds per thousand per square feet. Uh, yeah, so as a initial fertilizer to apply at the beginning of the season, if you're looking for like a weed and feed type product, um, that's not a bad choice. I mean, the, the fertilizers that, that I typically go with for, um, as far as a granular anyway, 
or like a, only have potassium in there, like a 007 type fertilizer. But if you want something that's got a little bit of nitrogen in it, get a little bit of more, more of a kicker to give the lawn a, a wake up, um, that would be fine too. As far as pounds to the ground, I, I would just follow whatever the, um, whatever the label specifies. So just off the top of my head, some back of the napkin math, um, if you stick to like three to four pounds per thousand with that, that should be a pretty good number as far as like how heavy you want to you wanna put it out. But again, the label should have spreader settings that will that'll ensure that you put out the correct amount of the dimension, the dithiopyr to make sure you get a good result from the pre-emergent additive that's in that. So it can work fine. Um, you know, for, for folks that don't want to have to deal with liquids or want to carry a backpack spray or you know anything like that. The granular products can uh, can be can be a good option. The thing I would not do, Jimmy, is I would not use that um, every month. So where people make a mistake, in my opinion, is they get a fertilizer like that and they apply it this month, they apply it next month, they like literally it becomes a fertilizer they use all season. And really, that's not what you want. For one, you don't need to apply pre-emergent to your lawn every single month, um, and then you don't need to introduce herbicide to your lawn every single month. So for the first um, feeding of the uh, of the season, sure. For the final feeding of the season, you know, as your fall pre-emergent, I'm okay with that too. But really, in between the spring and the fall, where you, that product, in my opinion, is appropriate, that's when you're going to want to switch to just a straight fertilizer product. So like Cubic Max or something along those lines, which um, which again is just fertilizer has some biosimilars in it, but it's not you're not putting herbicide in the soil every time you put a fertilizer out. So, great question. Um, if you already got that, hopefully that, um, that gets you all squared away. If you need anything else, let me know. You said you mailed a, mailed a picture of a mole. Um, I'll have to see if I can find it, um, uh, Jimmy, but, um, but yeah, I'll see if I can dig it up here in a little bit. All right. Next up we have Jared George. He says, Ron had my first powered real mo. <laughs> I did go for stripes this time. Um, I, uh, I just give it a good buzz all around. It's still greening up. I'm addicted. Yeah, man. It's, um, real mowing is a game changer. I mean, once you really get into it, it's, um, it again, I, I mean, all I can say is this, if you want a lawn that looks like, like that, you must real mow. Like you're not going to get a stand of grass at right now at like, um, five eighths, you know, 0.62 inches. And that's that tight, that dense, that, that gorgeous um, without real mowing. So real mowing definitely has its place. It is more of a time commitment. So it's not like these things are really equal. Um, but it, as far as appearance, man, it's, it is tough to beat what you can pull off with a, uh, with a real mower. Um, so good. Glad that you're having some fun. All right. We have a question here in the live stream, um, says, uh, let's see here. It says, um, Hey Ron, um, hope all is well. Can we talk PGR for cool season lawns? Is Primo Max a go or is T-Nex best? Watching from South Jersey. Yeah, Primo, here's the thing. So the active ingredient in Primo and in T-Nex are the same. It's Trinexapac ethyl. The carriers that are in Primo are different to the carriers that are in T-Nex. So um, to answer your question, yes. The labels for both Primo and the label for um, T-Nex um, both have um, uh, recommendations for cool season and warm season turf grass. What you're gonna find is the is the label rates for, for um, cool season turf grass tend to be a bit higher than what you would um, you would apply to most warm season turf grass. But again, Primo, yeah, absolutely is fine. Primo is an option. Um, there's another growth regulator. Um, a new is an option for, for cool season turf grass. Uh, but yes, to answer your question, absolutely Primo you can use on your, um, on your cool season lawn without issue. And uh, you know, if you kind of like what I, I help the other viewer with there in a second, I'll, I'll give you a link to this blog post on growth regulator that talks all about the rates, all the fun stuff that you need to know for getting a great result with, uh, with Primo. All right. So offered NV says, Hey Ron, weather is cooperating in our part of Nevada and grass is popping KBG. Very nice. Love it. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. Love to hear lawns are doing well across this great nation of ours. All right. Um, next up we have, uh, C Pims, Colin, he says, should be putting down the new Pasphalum sod in the front yard here in the coming month. Cannot wait. Awesome. 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 Very nice. I like it. I like it, Colin. Um, and then next up we have the everyday life saying, what do you recommend for someone that doesn't have irrigation? Can I still have a good looking lawn? You can, you can, even without irrigation, you can have a good looking lawn. Uh, you know, if you live in a part of the country, like you're in Georgia, we get rain fairly regularly this time of year. Um, and what you can also use are um, our moisture managers. Kind of, uh, there's a moisture manager called Hydrotain that allows your so your your soil to or your, it makes it makes the grass or it makes the water in your soil, the moisture in your soil, 
available to the grass more readily. So if you are someone that don't have um, an irrigation system, a moisture manager like Hydrotain is something that I would absolutely recommend. Um, what else? I mean, you can also get up there and you can manually water it. That's an option as well too, but I'll, let me let me help you out here, um, the everyday life. Look into this section of the golf course lawn store. You have Hydrotain, you also have its cousin, Foreplay. Either one of those will work. Uh, but yes, to answer your question, if you keep up with your mowing, a good nutrient program, uh, using granular biosimilants like Essential G are also a good option. Those are also gonna help your lawn do well uh, despite not having an irrigation system. And then just, just rain, you know, regular rainfall um, will, you know, in many, many cases will do well. What you'll find, where you're gonna start, where you're gonna struggle a little bit is whenever you get into the summer months and you start getting, you know, 10 days, a week, 10 days with no rainfall, that's when the lawn will begin, some of the color will be coming out of it. And if you were, were if you had irrigation, that is where it will kind of make up for that. So, you know, if you can manually water during the hotter times of the year, that would be a good thing to do. But can you get a great looking lawn without um, without irrigation? Yes, yeah, you absolutely, absolutely can. Again, moisture managers like Hydrotain, the one I just linked there in the chat for you, um, will be um, were, are a great option to help someone like you that, that doesn't have um, doesn't have irrigation. Even people with irrigation will benefit from it, but especially folks like you that don't have irrigation, um, you know, it will work well. And in your case, what I would say is this, with the liquid Hydrotain, um, it comes, um, you can get it with a Hosen, Hosen um, option. You're gonna wanna use that because the liquid Hydrotain does need to be watered in like right after application. If you go with the granular, you can put that down and as long as you're gonna get rain within the next couple of days after applying the granular, you're good to go. But the liquid, um, you're gonna want the hose end sprayer option because that's gonna put enough water out with the product to ensure that it gets down in the soil and works well. So just something to consider if you decide to go the Hydrotain route. All right, Jared says, now that I'll be mowing low, what is the secret to getting stripes in low cut Bermuda? The secret to getting low cut stripes in Bermuda. So you mean stripes that look like that? Um, so a couple of things, a couple of things I would say. Um, if you, once you, once you have, um, you have your mower, decide how you want, um, how you want the stripes to appear on the lawn. So, you know, kind of lay out like, like visually how you want your stripes to look on the lawn. And then what you'll notice here, if you look at my lawn, is even though there are, there are um, like you know dark white dark dark and light stripes in multiple directions. Whenever I mow the lawn, I go over the same stripe each time. So if you look over like the leftmost um, stripe, which is in the, in the frame right now, which is um, light. Um, whenever I mow the lawn in this direction back and forth, I always mow in that direction over that that part of the lawn. And then whenever I alternate and mow lengthwise, which we'll get around there, come on camera, move, 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 move. Same thing, same thing this way. So whenever you see it's light, I, I always go that way in that direction. And then whenever it's dark, I always come um, in that, I always mow, in other words, I, I, I burn the stripes in by mowing over the same stripes each time. That really helps to set them. Another thing you can do as well, uh, Jared, is if you can keep debris out of the, the lawn, so if you have the ability to lightly turf rake the lawn um, or verticut it um, you know, regularly, monthly for verticutting, but really for turf raking, if you can do that regularly, that's also gonna help the stripes because you're not gonna have all the dead material um, that is kind of competing with the, um, with the grass for color. Um, and that's that's really it. It just takes time. Just you know, um, setting, deciding how you want to lay out the stripes in the lawn, going over those stripes each time. So whenever you mow the lawn, make sure you hit the same ones each time, um, and then keeping debris out of it. So so bagging your clippings or catching your clippings is a good thing to do whenever you um, if you're really serious about getting the best the best possible color out of your um, out of your lawn. The other thing I can tell you is if you can use a growth regulator. That's also going to help too because it's going to it's going to reduce how quickly the grass grows, which is going to um, reduce it's going it's, it's going to reduce the chance of injury, which will cause like discoloration in the lawn, right? So if you look at like my back lawn, when the lawn when the back lawn is under regulation, this is like eight thousand square feet, and whenever I mow the entire back lawn, the entire back thing, the entire thing, it doesn't even fill up a grass catcher. So it's like it's maybe maybe just under halfway full mowing 8,000 square feet when the lawn is under regulation with um, with Primo. So that's something that I would consider as well. So you, whenever you said you wanna start introducing growth regulator, depending on how where your lawn is, um, that's another trick you can use as well too. So things are thing one, um, mow the lawn 
at between five eighths and three quarters of an inch. I think three quarters of an inch personally is a good height as far as being able to live with it over the course of the season. Um, keep debris out of the lawn. So what that means is catch your clippings, use a grass catcher. And then if you can, um, turf rake the lawn. If you have the ability to do it a couple times a month, that would be good. Um, and then whenever you're mowing, um, go over the same stripes each time. That's gonna really burn them in and really make those, those stripes pop. If you do that for you know, a, a month, you're really gonna like how the, the stripes look in the uh, in the lawn. So hope that helps. Um, great question. It's a process, but you can absolutely, you know, there's a, you can absolutely get a great, a great looking lawn with the, um, with the, with real mowing if you, if you just set up a, set a plan and just, and kind of stick with it. So, all right, next up is Oliver Rittum is in the house. What's going on, Oliver? He says, Ron, I introduced PGR to my lawn last week for the first time. I did a um, 0.25 ounces, um, 0.125 ounces, so quarter rate, or sorry, half rate rather, um, to start off and considering um, 0.25 ounces on the next app. The rate for Kama Bermuda is 0.375 by monthly. Should I do that instead? Are you sure you have Common Bermuda, um, Oliver? If it, if you are sure, then yes. I would say like you obviously started, you started at the half rate for hybrid, which is fine. Just, you know, it's early in the season. No worries with that at all. Um, when you get into May, yeah, if you want, if you're certain you have common and you want to go with the half rate, which is, you're right, it's 0.375, um, that would be good. That would, that's what I would do. Every two weeks, that's what you're going to want to spray on the lawn. It will, and it will help produce a, a good result. It'll, it'll produce a good result. So yeah, good, uh, good stuff. And again, I'm playing with something that I'm going to share with you. Again, it, it, the people in the academy are going to know about it first. Um, but you know, some of you guys have been asking, you know, how does the front lawn, if you guys look at the front lawn this year compared to years past, it's really tight, really dense. Um, the color looks really good. Like, and folks have asked, what are you doing differently this year? So the new strip program has been the same, but there's been something else I've been playing with that has really helped the lawn to tighten up and look fabu for this time of year. And I'll be sharing that again um, here soon with the Academy members first, but then, you know, all you guys will hear about it here uh, soon enough. So it's something, something kind of cool. It's not hard to do, but it's something that um, I started playing with. All right, uh, next up we have, we got a couple of super chats. Let me get down here and grab this one really quickly and then we'll go back to the comments you guys have. This one is from Shane McDonald. Thank you so much, Shane. Super chat. For he says, which turf rake do you use? Um, yeah, so my turf rake is, um, it's a cartridge that's on my Allet C27. Um, for 95% for of people, it's completely overkill. I would not go that route for a turf rake. What you would want to do is a um, is like something like a Sunjo. Those are like not as expensive, um, but the, the what I use for my turf rake is a, is the cartridge that's in my Allet C27. If you want to see what that piece of equipment is like and what it what it does, I will get a um, I'll, I'll give you a link from a live stream that I did last May, late May last year, where I turf rake verticut. Nothing about it. I verticut, turf rake, and then mow with that piece of equipment. So you can see it in action in case you're interested. But again, for most people, for most folks, it's completely overkill. I would not, I wouldn't recommend it unless you've got a got a really big lawn. Um, and given that they raised the prices on it quite a bit here and, and you got a lot of cash laying around because they're not, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. Um, you know, the, the folks at Allet are very, are very proud of it. So uh, so there you go. That live stream, you'll be able to see um, my equipment that I use for turf raking and verticutting and all that all that fun jazz. So, um, so yeah, highly would recommend it. Again, the big thing is don't go too aggressive, but it really does help produce a, a great result. Again, I was, you know, there's a lot of people will say, you know, you don't need to turf rake Bermuda grass. You don't, you know, it, and the thing is you technically you don't have to, but it looks a whole lot better if you do. Um, and some, a couple of changes that have happened. If you guys have been watching my content for any period of time, if you look in years past how the lawn looked, it looked good, but it's never, it's never looked quite like this. And the thing that's, that's really changed is the cultural practices. It's the verticutting and the turf raking. That's the big difference between how the lawn looked in like say 2020 and how it looks how it looks today. So it absolutely um, is something that's, a, that's, that's good to do just to make sure that you're just not too aggressive with it. Just don't get out there and, and beat the lawn up. You want the, you want the turf rake just above the surface of the soil. You know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna be like, like, like um, you don't wanna be too aggressive, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it really does help with the appearance of the lawn, helps with, again, disease problems and all that kind of stuff. So would highly, um, highly recommend it if you're really just looking for that, that thing that's going to take your lawn to the next level, a little X factor. All right, next up is uh, Gladiator392. It says, hey, Ron, my Bermuda is coming out of dormancy, but I still have a lot of Poanua. How do I get rid of it? And do I need topsoil 
and level it with sand. Great question, Gladiator. So um, as far as getting rid of Poanua, um, what you're gonna want to use, if you want, if you don't want to just wait it out, wait for just to die off, you can use a herbicide called Certainty. This is labeled to control Poanua in warm season turf grass. This time of year, you're gonna need to go with the high rate. So that's gonna be uh, two large scoops that comes with a measuring spoon. It's got a small end and a large end. You're gonna wanna use two large scoops uh, per thousand square feet to get a good result controlling POA uh, this time of year. You're also gonna wanna mix it with surfactant. So Certainty, and surfactant for your Bermuda lawn, that will um, will do a good job cleaning up the Poanua. So I'll, I'll get you a link here really quickly, Glad Gladiator, to where you can find that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's what I would do. If you don't want to, you don't want to deal with Poa, and you or you don't want to, um, you don't want to wait for it to die off because we're still it's still gonna take a while this time of year. You're still talking like late May, early June before it's really gone. It'd be kind of an eyesore. Um, you can use this. So uh, so here you go at Gladiator. This will get you all squared away. That's that is what I would I would use. It's a great question. So let me save that one really quickly. Um, and you know on the topic of um, of Poanua, getting eliminating Poanua. You know you had to, you had to ask the question about eliminating Poa in a warm season lawn. You know really up until recently there hasn't been a lot of great options for. Um, controlling Poanua in cool season turf grass, not selectively in here, right? I mean, you can use glyphosate, but then that's gonna kill your grass too, right? So New Farm, the folks that make Certainty, also recently reformulated and have released, re-released a selective herbicide for cool season turf grass. So for um, so for fescue, for rye grass, and for bent grass is what it's um, it's really labeled for. It it can also work in Kentucky bluegrass, but you have to do testing to make sure that your particular cultivar of Kentucky bluegrass is tolerant of it. And what I'm talking about is a herbicide called Velocity PM. This is the one I was telling you guys about a couple of months ago. I said I was working on getting some of it in. Um, it is not inexpensive, um, but it's a as far as being able to selectively control poanua in your um, your fescue, ryegrass, um, creeping bent grass, and some Kentucky bluegrass cultivars. Uh, this is this is what you want. The nice thing, cool thing about this is that um, it's not inexpensive. Like the, the price of this um, on the store we list, have it listed for. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll link it for you guys here in the chat. Um, is not inexpensive, but believe it or not, it's actually like this product is less expensive per application than Certainty is. So. This goes for $6.99 on the golf course lawn store, and it covers 7.1 acres. So this is like six, it's, um, it's, it's 16 ounces. The rate for each application is two and a quarter ounces per acre. Or if you're doing like spraying like like a like a, a normal lawn, normal size lawn, it's um it's 1.5 milliliters per thousand square feet. So you know, you figure out, you work out the math on that for certainty, which a lot of people like and love for controlling POA, this is quite a bit more expensive per application than um, than Velocity is. So this it's not inexpensive. I, 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 I've already provided feedback to New Farm and said, hey, you guys really should make this like in a one ounce bottle or a two ounce bottle because for people, um, you know, for residential lawns, it's a lot of product. Um, and because of that, it becomes expensive, but it's, um, you know, for, for controlling, if you want a way to control POA, POA, POANUA, POA trivialis, um, it does a bunch of other weeds too. It does sedges, it does, um, I think it does yellow nut sedge, it does um, dandelions, um, you know, that's that's gonna be your jam. So I will link it here in the chat for you guys now in case you wanna take a look at it. Again, it's for cool season grass. You really don't wanna use this on warm season lawns. I mean, they, they provide guidance saying, you know, if you have a warm season lawn and it's dormant, you can spray it on it, but I wouldn't. Like, why not just use certainty? Like, it's not, it's not, not worth the risk in my opinion. Um, so this is, um, I'll bring it up here really quick. This is it, Velocity PM. Um, we've got it in just the bottle by itself and you've also got it with a, um, in a option that, that also includes Turf Mark. Uh, with this product, you do not want to use surfactant of any kind, don't use surfactant with it. So I, I was talking to the New Farm rep about it, like tips on, on how to apply it. Um, you're going to, to, to get a good result, you're gonna to want to, to, to do two applications. You see it comes with a syringe, which I will show you guys here really quickly. I've got one, got one here. I took it out of the package. You guys can actually see. It comes with a syringe so you can ease, you can easily and accurately measure out um, the product. And again, the rate is going to be 1.5, 1.5 milliliters uh, per thousand square feet. And um, there's a couple ways to do it. 
But what they recommend is um, a is to do two applications. So this time of year is a great time. Anytime when temperatures are between 70 degrees, air temps um, all up into the um, the the 80s, 70 between 70 and 90 degrees is where you can you want to use um, velocity PM. So great time of year if you have a warm season, warm a cool season lawn. You're trying to get rid of Poanua, um, Poa trivialis, uh, and a bunch of other weeds. Let me show you. I can I can look here and tell you what else it controls. Let's see here. Yep. So you got. Poenia, Poa trivialis, dandelions, chickweed, handbit, um, yellow nut sedge. But really the thing that you guys probably mostly care about are these two, Poenia and Poa trivialis, because those two have been difficult to control in a cool season lawn. Again, so in your ryegrass and fescue lawn, um, you know, and your, your bent grass lawn, you're good to go. And for a Kentucky bluegrass lawn, you just have to do some testing. Because if you, you think about it, like... Um, like Kentucky bluegrass, we we call it annual bluegrass, right? So to be able to determine if the kind of Kentucky bluegrass that you have on your lawn is tolerant of it, because some are, some are, some aren't, is just through testing. So, um, but if you got a ryegrass on or a fescue lawn, you're good to go. So there's now an option for selectively removing um, poanua in cool season turf grass, and we um, we got some of it in. So if you guys are interested, it's available. It's on the golf course lawn store. I'll put a link here in the chat. And uh, what I'd say is find, you know, some friends that you can um, that you can split a bottle with. Because, again, like one bottle treats like seven acres. It's like 300,000, over 300,000 square feet. So well, that one bottle goes a really long way. Uh, so, um, but yeah, it's um, I'm, I'm happy, happy and proud to be able to carry it. And hopefully you guys are able to use it to get some um, some value out of you know, getting that nasty weed um, out of your out of your cool season turf grass lawn. So good stuff. All right, next up, we got a couple of super chats. I'm behind. Let me go grab one here really quick. This one is from Jared George. He says, Super chat. Ron, thank you for the mini course on stripes. Best concise explanation on locust stripes I've heard. Um, it ain't much, but I appreciate it. Hey, man, I appreciate any super chat. It is definitely, definitely, definitely appreciated. Thank you so much. And I also appreciate you just coming in and hanging out, man. You know, your time is the most valuable thing you have. And you choose to spend your Friday nights here on the live stream, you could be somewhere else, but you're here. So I really do appreciate that. And yeah, stripes, it's not difficult, man. It's just um, like to get them looking good and have them can, like really burnt, like look, looking consistently good, it does take a bit of planning. Um, and if you wait, you, you see how I did mine, I kind of I kind of cheated. So to make sure between from season to season, so if you look really closely, look at the patio, look all the way in the background, you'll see that I line up the one light stripe there on the left side on the on that side of the patio, so I always have like a, a, a something to index off of as the season goes, and when I'm just starting out the season. And on the right side of the patio, you can't really see it, but the same thing. There's like a dark stripe that I index off of, so that I can ensure that you know I'm always I'm always hitting the exact same same pattern, same lines um, each time. But yeah, man, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I've also got another video on lawn striping in case you're interested. I will link that in the chat for you too, Jared. It's all about um, all about lawn stripes if you if you care. And uh, I will link that in the chat for you as well. I shot that video a couple of years. Here we go. That was a fun video. I shot it really early one morning. All right, cool. So there you go, Jared. Boom. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Where did I leave off? All right, so next up we got T1... No, we have Ozman. He says... Uh... Oh, actually, I'm glad I didn't answer your second, second part of your question. You said, um, you know, answer your question about POA, and as far as leveling, I do recommend soil, um, either screen topsoil or compost along with the sand, because that way you're also introducing some organic material um, to the soil as part of the leveling project. That's what I'm a fan of doing. Some people just do 100% sand, that can work, but I am a fan of doing like a 70-30 blend if at all possible, because you're getting really the best of both worlds, in my opinion. All right, next up is Ozman. He says, I'm very new to lawn care. Any chance you can level most lawns or most all lawns. Also, is there any plus to having a St. Augustine? Seems like it's not a top choice for most. Uh, yeah, pretty much any lawn can be leveled. Yes, I mean, depending on where you're starting, it take will we'll, we'll dictate like how much work it's gonna take to get it to where you want it. Uh, but yes, you can make any lawn better. And really, when it comes to leveling, it's, you're not, you know, it's not necessarily gonna make the lawn truly level or truly flat. What you're doing is you're taking a lot of the sharp rises and dips out of the lawn. So that way the, the mower can, can follow those undulations easier without scalping. I mean, if you look at my back lawn, it looks flat, but it really isn't. It 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 leans, it um it's really kind of like a it's like a very mild bowl 
Um, again, it doesn't really come out on video, but it but it, it it's not like super flat. So with leveling, your 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 goal is if you got like a dip, like a like a two inch or three inch dip in the lawn. Um, that the mower goes into or falls into is to take that kind of stuff out to kind of smooth out the contours to where you're able to to mow the lawn at lower cutting heights with less chance of injuring it, less chance of scalping it. So um, so yeah. As far as Saint Augustine, um, you know, Saint Augustine is very popular. It's popular in Texas and it's popular in Florida. Um, so this really depends on where uh, where in the country you are. In Georgia, it's not as popular. If you're trying to get a lawn that looks looks like how my how my back lawn looks like that St. Augustine really isn't a great choice because you can't cut it at those at those heights it won't tolerate it very well but if you like that taller grass kind of a if you want like a tall tall fescue like grass that's kind of got that crunchy that crunchy feel to it when you walk over it if you like that then St. Augustine is a good um is a good choice you know so it just really depends on where you are in the country um, and what what kind of look you want in your line. St. Augustine would not be my personal first choice for a lawn, but it can look really good. It, I mean, St. Augustine, any any kind of grass really taken care of properly can look great. So just depends on what your your goals are. All right, Justin Ennis says, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, 24419 in the front, and I am currently cutting at 0.2 inches. You're a boss. 0.2 inches, huh? All right. It says, uh, soil test came back with a 7.1 pH. My question is, what would be the main thing you would focus on applying to lower pH? It's a great question, Justin. What I would use is a sulfur of some sort. Again, 7-1 isn't, isn't you know, horrible, but you don't want to really get it going very much higher than that. So I would apply a sulfur. Uh, you know, regular apps of that will, will bring your pH down over time. A great option is what I'm linking for you in the chat right now. And uh, this is what this is what I would use to help lower your pH. And outside of that, a good nutrient program. You know, make sure you're fertilizing properly. I'm sure you are. You probably got a lot got it going uh, going well. If you're if you're mowing the lawn at, at 0.2 inches, I imagine you're feeding it, um, and you just you just living your best life. So yeah, that's what I would use as far as a option for lowering your pH, which is at 7.1. Great stuff. Send me a picture, man. I want to see a picture of this lawn at 0.2 inches. That's like Green's Heights. It's like high greens heights. You really can uh, you can really get that get that going, man. It's sweet, nice nice work. T one thousand says good Friday all. What's going on, T one thousand? Uh, hopefully you are doing well. And he says to hit the like button. Yeah, definitely, guys. We got one hundred and sixty five people in the live stream right now. Only eighty eight likes. Come on, surely we can do better than that. So if you like the live stream, hit the like button. If you don't like the live stream, you can hit the you can hit the not like button. That's an option too. But you know, send good vibes to YouTube. Help me out. You know, do me do me a solid. Hit the like button. It's a free way to send good vibes to the algorithm, get more people coming our way, and it costs you absolutely nothing. So if you guys can do that, I would really, 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 really appreciate it. All right, next up is Oz, man. He says, first ever live, and I love that I found this channel. I am glad to hear that, Oz. Hopefully we're providing some value to where you'll keep coming back. That is our goal. And um, and yeah, Hopefully you're getting some enjoyment out of it. Got a good question here. The Maestro says, hey, Ron, long time no see. <laughs> What's your go-to app or website for reliable rain forecasting? Um, just the app on my iPhone. I just look at the, just, you know, on your iPhone, you swipe, get, you go over to the left side and it shows like the weather forecast. I just look at that. I don't look at it because you know why? Because here's the thing, guys, and I, you guys are probably also guilty of this too. It doesn't matter because whenever, if I look at the um, the the app and I say, oh, it's, it's, there's like a, you know, 30% chance of rain, 40% chance of rain, um, even higher than 50% chance of rain, and I really count on it, half time, doesn't rain. But when if you guys want a guaranteed way to get it to rain, for me to get it to rain, I'll just run my irrigation. It, it won't fail. Like literally on a day which says, oh, it's like a 10% chance of rain, I'll run my irrigation that morning and I'll wake up and it's like, it'll be raining for like half the morning. So I just do my rain dance. I just put the irrigation system on for a little while and kind of look outside and just and just wait till the clouds start coming over and then turn it off real quick. That's how I, I figure out my rain, my, uh, my, my, my rain forecast. But I just look at the app on the phone. I don't, I don't follow, um, I don't use any particular, any specialized app or weather station or anything like that because it, it hasn't been super accurate for me. So whatever the forecast says is what I, I go with. I plan accordingly. All right, next up is Colin C. Pims is here. He says, Ron, I think we need to see a video of you putting out an oversized chest or checker set on the lawn. Would be one cool photo. Um, would love, it would have to be quick so you don't have burn spots. Aha, you know, it's funny. A buddy of mine came over this afternoon to come visit and he said the same thing. He's he's in the golf. He said, man, you know what? You could make this like a, a really cool chess board. And I'm like, yeah, I could. But mm. you know, then, then, to your point, you leave it there for too long, a couple hours and while you're setting it all up and you'd have like, you know, dead spots or burn spots you don't want can't have that so we'll see colin i mean plus i don't know where would i even get 
oversized chess pieces. And then once I'm done making this really cool picture, what am I gonna do with said oversized chess pieces? I guess if there's a place where you could rent them, it could make sense. But as far as buying them, I don't, I'd have nothing to do with them once I'm done. So there's that, that's always an issue, right? Something to keep in mind as far as, as, far as that goes. All right, um, Elisa Petty says, um, hey Ron, I have um, all I have tall type fescue. How often should I vary the direction of cut? A great question, Elisa. Really, every time you mow. I'm a fan of varying the, the direction of cut every time you mow, you mow your lawn. Um, you know, with my lawn, I, I vary the direction of cut in two patterns, two different ways. I will either go, you've already seen the lawn a bunch of times, but I can, I'll show you really quickly. I mow like either to and from the house or I mow parallel to the house. So I, I, each time I mow, I switch it up. One time I'll mow parallel to the house. Another time I'll mow, you know, uh, I guess you'd say perpendicular to the house, right? Back and forth towards, towards the house. So I do that every single time. Um, it's a good thing to do. For the front lawn, I mow in three directions. So I will mow... Um, I'll mow lengthwise, I'll mow diagonally this way, and I'll mow diagonally this way. So the only way I don't mow with the front lawn is straight up and, straight up and straight down because a couple of reasons. One, um, it the, you don't get as good a cut when you do that. Like it tends, the mower tends to cut taller when you're going uphill and cut shorter when you're going downhill. And it's just, um, it's like from a safety standpoint, you're a lot more likely to, sl to slip and, and lose it if you're cutting on a slope. So well, on a slope, either... Um, across the grain, so I'll, I'll give you an example. Say the soil test kit is my, is my slope, either across like so, or diagonally like this, or diagonally like this. So that's the three ways that I cut my um, my front lawn. And really, like I said, every time you, um, you mow your lawn, I would vary the direction of cut. All right, great question, Elisa. Hopefully uh, hopefully that helps. And uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is what I would, um, I would do it. The reason, reason being, you just, it helps prevent, helps prevent wear issues um, in the lawn and just overall, it, it helps produce a better cut over time. Like the, the, the lawn is gonna be, will look better if you vary the mowing directions each time you mow it. All right, next up we have Oliver Rittum. He is back in the live stream. He says, I have some June bugs around the front porch and lawn, should I be concerned for grubs? I don't think I've ever had any issues in the past and I currently do not have any significant damage present. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you've already put an insecticide out, if you put a cellar print out already, um, that should just be good, um, Oliver. If you've not put insecticide out as yet, I would. Uh, I'm a fan of preventative insecticides, just like I'm a fan of preventative fungicides, so I, I would do that. But if you've already got that out there, I, I really wouldn't sweat it too much. I wouldn't, wouldn't be too concerned. I would not be concerned. Uh, Jimmy Miller says, photo of the front yard after the stump removal two weeks ago. I just emailed uh, POA moved in big time. Did you? Send me a picture, Jimmy, yeah? Um, oh, yeah, I can see some Poe in that. Let me look here. Can I get this picture on the live stream? Can I make that happen through the magic of technology? Let us see. Let us see. I think I can. So I can do it. All right, so Jimmy's um, lawn, you can see here. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is what he's talking about. And, yeah, if you look, you can see the um, where the tree used to be. But then also those light green spots in the lawn, um, that, it, that looks like Poa annua. That looks like Poa. Yeah, you definitely do have some Poa in there, Jimmy. So yeah, again, certainty is what I would use. Certainty and surfactant is what I would use to, um, to get rid of that. All right, good stuff. Uh, Justin King says, doing aeration hopefully next week. Nice, I like it. Next we got um, Brian Hall saying, good evening, Ron. When is a good time to dethatch my lawn here in Michigan? Thank you. Yeah, so if you're talking about uh, like turf raking, like that I'm a fan of doing, but for most lawns, um, Brian, like dethatching in the true sense of the, of the word where you're getting out there with a solid bladed tool and you're like, you're like, you're, you're tearing a bunch of the grass out. Um, while it looks cool is it's in most lawns, it's really not necessary. Like you're just doing, you're just doing more stress, more damage to the lawn and not really getting a whole lot of, out of it. Um, what I'd recommend is power raking or turf raking. Um, and that's going to get you a lot of the benefits of, you know, removing debris from the lawn, reducing thatch, like in general, just getting a lot of the benefits that I think people go for when they dethatch without the, the drop, without the, the, the trauma and the, the unnecessary damage, in my opinion, that dethatching produces. So let me, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So most people say dethatching when they mean turf raking, in my opinion, or they should mean turf raking, in my opinion. So for example here... Um, all right, good. So this is a good example. So if you look at this cartridge, 
um, from Allet. This is a dethatcher, right? So you see what that is? It's like a so solid blade with hooks, um, with a hooked end. That's very aggressive. Like you run that on the lawn, that's gonna tear a lot of material. That's gonna be very aggressive. And most lawns really just don't need that. Now compare that to, that's a verticutter. Um, compare that to, where is it? This, they call it a scarifier on this one. Um, compare that to this, right? So this um, is a scarifier or turf rake, depending on which model of outlets you're looking at. And this has this, this spring-loaded tine, spring-loaded fingers that will gently remove dead material, loose material, um, thatch out of the lawn without causing the damage that, that this will. You know what I mean? So given a choice between using that on the lawn or using this on the lawn, I would opt for um, a scarifier or turf rake or power rake, they're all kind of synonymous, um, versus using something like this. Like this, in my opinion, is far, far too aggressive for most lawns. Now, if you have a lawn that's been neglected for years and years and you're moving in and you're trying to give it a reset, then yeah, a dethatch one time is, is okay, but then after that, really just turf raking is all you really should need. Um, and as far as when to do it, um, when the lawn is actively growing. So, you know, if your lawn, I'm sure your lawn doesn't really go dormant, but if you're out there mowing it regularly um, and you want to go out and turf rake it now, that would be good because what, what, you're, what you're essentially doing is if the lawn is growing and you know that it's growing because you're regularly mowing it, um, when you go out and you turf rake, it's the ability for the lawn to grow through that and just kind of just recover and, and, and thrive and do well is much better than if you were to say turf rake the lawn like right when winter stops and the lawn is still kind of just kind of hanging out, not doing a whole lot, you know what I mean? So you really wanna do it whenever the lawn is um, is actively growing. And again, if you're out there mowing it, then you can, you can turf rake it. So dethatching in the true sense of the word, I am not a fan of for most lawns, Turf raking, power raking, scarification, all kind of synonymous. That I am a fan of doing. And again, just don't don't be too aggressive when you uh, when you go about doing that. So hope that helps, Brian. Uh, great question, and glad to hear that you you're you guys are trying to get some more nicer weather in um, up north. All right, next up is Will Covey. He says, did Alex um, did Alex the neighbor end up getting a Revolution Twenty Six? I remember he did a video with it a while ago. He seemed to like it. Yes, he. He is gonna get one. He hasn't gotten one as yet, but he is he is getting one. Um, they they've um, like pretty much all the mowers are spoken for. Like whenever um, whenever Lee, whenever Real Rollers bought or got the initial shipment, like all they they got the initial shipment of mowers that were going out that are going out to customers. Some of them are being picked up, and they also had like a ha a handful of mowers that are also just addition in addition to that in case of damage or things along those lines. And one of those, I believe, is what they gave to me, is what they gifted to me. But I mean, as far as mowers for sale, if you want to buy a mower now, you will get it in June, I believe, when the when the, the next container comes in. So, but yeah, and that's when he's looking to get his. Uh, so yeah, because he likes it. He lo I mean, the mower cuts great. And the nice thing about this, Will, is that compared to, if you saw the video that I did last year, the mower last year compared to now, the mower now is so much better. They did a lot of refinements to the mower that really make it nice. It, cu it cuts better. Like they balanced it. They balanced it. It was already fine balanced like front front to back as far as it's sitting on the turf and just kind of riding on the turf well. But um, right to left, um, it wasn't as good as it could have been. So they, they, they did some stuff with shifting the mower and balancing out the clutch system that they added to it, making some changes there. And overall, the mower just, it, you, again, literally all this week, the back lawn has been cut with the revolution. And you gotta look at that. I mean, that if I told you it was cut with the outlet, you guys would believe me. If I said it was cut with the greens master, you'd be like, yeah, that looks pretty good, right? But no, it's been the revolution that's been doing it this week. So um, it's, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Is I know a lot of people are, are irritated and waiting to get their mowers and I, I completely feel you, but you, it is worth the wait. You will really enjoy this mower when you get it. It's a, it's a it is, if a greens master and a true cut had a baby, that is what the revolution is. That's that's probably the best way I can I can say. I can describe the mower. It's a really, really nice mower. All right, next up is Justin Judkins. He says, I'm currently mowing at one inch with the Earthwise, waiting for the Revolution 26. Yet another person. When I get it, planning on doing a high to cut reset and air rate and level. What height would you recommend resetting to if I plan on maintaining three quarters of an inch? Great question, Justin. If your plan is to maintain the lawn at 0.75 inches, I would bring it down to half an inch. So a quarter of an inch or so under where you intend to maintain it is a good is a good area. Um, that's that's going to make it also easier whenever you do your leveling work to work the material into the canopy. So that's that's an, another bonus. And yeah, ha a quarter of an inch underneath uh, underneath where you you plan on maintaining the lawn is where I would go. Now, one question you didn't ask and something I just want to share with you um, is whenever you top dress your lawn. 
and this is for anybody that you guys that are planning to top dress your lawns this time of year. Whenever you top dress your lawn, um, for the first few mows, raise the height of the mower up because nothing will, well, outside of hitting concrete, nothing will dull a real embed knife faster than running it through sand. So if you were maintaining your lawn at say three quarters of an inch, um, uh, the good example is yours, right? So, so you're, you're going to reset your, your mower down to half an inch, right? Your, your lawn down to half an inch. You're going to top dress it. Um, honestly, for the first for the first week or two when you start mowing, not after after top dressing, when the lawn grows through, the first week or so when you start mowing it, I might go like 0.9. I, I might even go maybe closer to an inch and then work your way back down to three quarters because you really want to keep you really want to keep the mower out of the sand. You know what I mean? It does not take, I mean, uh, like two mows, one or two mows with the mower hitting a lot of sand is going to be enough to where you're going to have to back lap it. And you don't really want to have to do that with a brand new mower that you just got. So I would highly recommend when you level it, allow the grass to grow through. I know you're going to want to get out there really quickly with the mower and you're going to be patient and I'll, or not want to be patient. You don't want to be gung-ho, but like, like try and stay that and allow the grass to grow through. And for the first few cuts, raise the height of cut up just a little bit to keep the mower out of the sand. That's the other piece of advice I'd give you. You didn't ask that, but I'm just trying to save you from having to go out and get your brand new mower and have to get it sharpened, you know, because you ran it through sand after leveling. So there's something else to keep in mind. All right, great question. Uh, next up, we have, you know, just I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that one because I'm sure it's a question I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get as we, um, as the season progresses. So I'm gonna save that one, turn it into a short, why not? All right, next up we have um, Gary Freeman. Gary Freeman is in the house. And he says, hey, Ron, hashtag Strap Action Gang. Happy Friday. What's going on, Gary? Thank you so much for taking some time out of your Friday to come hang out here on the live stream. I appreciate you, sir. And then next, we have the Trojan. Trojan Dave is in the house. Trojan Dave, I haven't seen you in a while, man. Glad to see you. All, the, all the, the diehards are all coming back. This is cool. He says, ready for this growing season. I'm mowing at 0.75 inches twice a week. Should I bag the grass uh, clippings or let them fall into the lawn? Are there any situations where you would bag the clippings? It depends on you. So if you are all about the best appearance, best color, best appearance, bag the clippings. Um, the negative to doing that is you got to get rid of them, right? You get, you're, you're getting creating all this trash you have to get rid of. If you're using growth regulator, that's kind of that's less of a less of a problem because the, the amount of clippings that are going to come off the lawn are not going to be that much. Um, the benefit to mulching is it's free fertilizer, right? You know, they, the research says that if you mulch the clippings back into your lawn over the course of a season, it's almost like getting a, a free fertilizer application. So there are some benefits to doing that. I don't mulch into my lawn anymore. In years past, I used to do that, but I don't anymore. I, I bag, I bag all my, um, I bag all my clippings. I really do. I like, I just like the apparent, I like the way the lawn looks, looks more by, um, by doing that. So um, by catching your clippings, you are, um, you know, you just, you don't have all the stuff that's, that's going into the lawn. I mean, some people, there's people that say that, yes, if you, if you, um, the clippings that go in the lawn are so small that it doesn't affect the color of the lawn. I respectfully disagree. I've actually, I've done it. I've tried it on my lawn. I've tried it both ways and color wise, it doesn't look as good if there's clippings on the lawn versus if you, you bag them. So it's less work to just mulch them. But if you want in my opinion, the best looking Santa turf grass, then you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna catch the um, catch the clippings. And again, if you're, you know, if, if I were gonna meet you in the middle, if you, if the lawn is under regulation, if the lawn is being um, under regulation, like from using Primo, it becomes really less of an issue. Because again, like if my entire back lawn, when I cut the entire back lawn, when um, when it's it's got uh, Primo on it, when it's when it's, um, when it's under um, PGR, like literally like less than half of the grass catcher is what is, is what, that's how much grass is in it. So if I were to mulch that back into the lawn, it may not make a huge difference because with it, with the lawn being under regulation, but just visually it looks better. Also, as far as tracking grass clippings into the house, if you catch your clippings, less of that's going to happen too. So it really depends on you. If you got the time to do it um, and you got a way to get rid of the debris, then go for it. Uh, visually, it, in my opinion, it does look better if you catch your clippings, but you know, there's, it's, this is like a, this is a question of like, which mower is the best mower. So for some people, this is like religion. Some people say, you know, you absolutely should catch your, you should never, you should never mulch clippings or you should never, you should, you should mulch everything back in your lawn. And others say you should, um, you should catch your clippings. I've done it both ways for years and years and years. I was a mulch guy and then I got the outlet and I became a catch everything guy. And again, if you, if you, one, look at the difference in the lawn. The vision, you can look at how my lawn looked in 20, 
before 2022, and then look at how it looks now, and there you go. There, those, those are your differences between again the turf raking, vertical cutting, and then also I don't, I don't um, mulch the clippings into the lawn anymore. The difference, the proofs in the pudding. You can look at a lawn and see how it's how it's how it's changed just from changing those things. All right, next up is fresh apples. It says, is there anything you can do? about common Bermuda in your lawn. A company overseeded part of my lawn, a small part would common. Uh, yeah. So is there anything you can do to get rid of it? Um, not easily, because it's, it's more likely gonna come back. Um, what you can do is use growth regulator to hide it. So if you use growth regulator on your lawn, um, uh, it does, uh, on a lawn that has common and um, hybrid, the common will be less apparent. You're not gonna see it as much. If you go looking for it, you will be able to see it, but using PGR, using Primo, makes it less apparent than if you don't use it. Um, so that's the thing I would say. There's not really a way to selectively remove common Bermuda um, out of hybrid. No one's cracked that, that cookie as yet, but as far as, as, as hiding it and being, being a little bit less apparent, um, growth regulator is um, is what I found works well as a way to do that. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be able to share something with you guys here soon that um, if you have some common in your lawn, really does help with that. Primo works well, but um, there's something I'm gonna be able to show you guys that that, that really even takes that to another level. So, so I'll see. I hope that helps. Fresh apples, um, but I'd say is PGR because because what you'll find is common Bermuda in a hybrid lawn tends to be. Um, it tends to look more lime greenish in color. I mean, it's still green, but the, 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 it's not as dark in color as the, the hybrid. So to help hide some of that, again, growth regulator is, um, is, a, is a good tool for that purpose. And what I use, again, is Primo. So that's what I would, um, I would go with. All right, next up, he says, I'm worried in the summer, the lawns are going to look bad when cut short. Yeah, again, to kind of not to sound like a broken record, uh, growth regulator. That's, that's what I would, I would tell you to do. All right, next up, it says, um, Will Covey says, why do you think your lawn greens up fast as the neighborhood? Is there anything specific you can attribute it to? Uh, yeah, so if you look at my lawn and Alex's lawn, for the most part, they get a lot of the same treatment. So fertilization program is pretty much the same. Um, the thing that's different about my lawn is every month, every single month, I'm religious about this, every month I ensure that I put essential G down. I put down a granular biosimilar on my lawn every single month. That is the one thing that, that's, a, that's a big difference between um, his program and and what I do. Um, I also, uh, leading up to the season, I also turf rake. He doesn't really have a way to turf rake. He doesn't have a, um, he doesn't, I mean, sometimes he'll borrow my outlet, but he can't do it as often as I do it. So that's another thing. So as far as keeping debris and just garbage out of my lawn, I do that. That also helps the lawn to green up, to green up sooner. So between Essential G, so the granular biosimilant that I, I use as part of my program, as a core part of my program, and also turf raking, those things help the lawn to um, to wake up sooner because you're right, man. It's it's a it's a it's a night and day difference. I mean, even though Alice's lawn is really close to mine, like if you look at the front lawn here, so I can catch it by pause. Like you look at um, that's look at the difference in the in the background. So that that lawn in the background, the stripes that are going away from us, that is his lawn, and then the lawn that's closest to us is um, is my lawn. So you can see the difference in color. Um, and again, the front lawn, and then also the neighbor's lawn in the background, same kind of thing. So. I, I would say that. I also, um, you know, Alex started feeding his lawn last month too. Um, I started my spoon feeding program last month as well. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, you guys know what I'm doing. I mean, if you guys want to see what I'm doing on my lawn, literally it's, it's documented like that, like that, um, that program, that month by month calendar that's on the store on the, on the golf course lawn store, that is what I'm doing. So if you look at this, this is what I'm doing. So like, a, you know, scalp or in February, scalp or turf rake or just clean, pretty much clean the crap out of your lawn, clean all the debris out of your lawn, soil test it, begin fertilizing in March, which is what I did with the 12 24 carbon kit application, which is what I did in March, essential G application. Again, that happened as well too. And then April is the same thing, you know, um, core, you know, core aeration. Um, I have not done that as yet. Um, you know, if you got a cool season lawn, this would be the month to overseed if you want to go do that kind of thing. But then, yeah, the lawn got humic max this month. It got a seller print this month. It got the carbon kit. It got essential G. So literally what you are seeing here, this is the playbook. This is exact. This is what I do on my lawn. This is what, this is it. Like what you're seeing here is I'm not telling, I'm not, I am not doing, um, one thing and then telling you guys to do something else. Like this is what I do. This is what I do. Um, every, like 
every season. That's 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 what I do. And as far as uh, small tweaks, and if I make small changes, I will add that. Now, if I'm testing, if I'm testing a um, like another like a new product, like that won't be reflected in here. Um, but the, some of the stuff that I'm I'm testing this season um, will not would are are not will not I won't attribute how the front lawn looks to that. They're not gonna you know that they're not that's not gonna it wouldn't help the lawn with green up is what I'm trying to say. So. Um, I mean, I'll share that with you guys here. You know, maybe next month we'll see. Um, but yeah, that program that's listed there—that is what I do, and I just and I do it consistently. You know, the thing is, is that it's not like one month I do it, and then next month I, I take off. You know, like one week I mow the lawn consistently, and then another one I don't, and then one month I turf rake, another month I don't, one month I put essential G down, and like two months go by I don't do anything. Like I do this consistently all the time, and that's what leads up to these to these results. You know what I mean? So it's just it's not magic. It's just doing the same thing consistently over time. Um, and that's, um, that's how you get, that's how you get the results like that. So it's, um, it, you know, again, I'm, I'm really happy with how the lawn's doing this season. It's definitely come alive sooner this year than, um, than it has in years past. And also the color this year is, um, is looking really nice too. So hopefully that helps. Will, um, again, if you need anything else, let me know, but again, you can, you've got the answers to the test are on the store under the, um, under the, the, the calendar. All right, next up is, is Kevin L. He says, can I mix a Celeprin SC and Pillar with my PGR and Turf Plex when I'm doing my every 15-day spoon feeding? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So if you think about that, a Celeprin, for a couple of things, um, a Celeprin SC, so your fungicide and pill, uh, uh, sorry, a Celeprin SC, your insecticide, and Pillar um, SC, which is your fungicide, really you're going to be applying um, a celeprin once now, and then maybe once again in like August time frame. So there's no need to do that every time you're spoon feeding the lawn. Um, so, and also another standpoint is a celeprin and pillar uh, both need to be sprayed or should be sprayed with a larger droplet, so like a flood jet tip, and they should be watered in after application. Whereas um, growth regulator, which is like Primo and Turfplex, should not be. So Turfplex and Primo, you would mix those two, you'd spray them on the lawn and allow them to dry. They work by foliar uptake, whereas a celeprin and pillar are need to get in the soil to work. So so if, you, if you're asking me, can you mix a celeprin and pillar and spray those at the same time. Yes, absolutely, no problem at all with doing that. And um, if you're telling me, if you're asking, you can mix um, Primo and Turfplex and spray those at the same time. Yes, but I would not do that combination like all four of them together. I would do like a Celeprin and Pillar, do that, and then like Growth Regulator and Turfplex. I would do that. That's separate. So, um, so hopefully that helps. I would not do them all together. So, um, so yeah. Again, larger flood jet tip for a Celeprin SC and Pillar and a foliar tip for um, Primo and Turfplex. So hope that helps, Kevin. Um, and uh, and yeah, that's that's what I was, I would I wish wouldn't do that. I, I've never even tested that because it doesn't really make sense to mix all that together and spray them at the same time. I would I would do them separately. All right, next up is Sean Murphy. You guys are quiet tonight here on the gram. Make sure I'm not missing anybody. I'm not. Cool. Um, Sean Murphy's up next. He says, um, happy Friday, Ron. Looking forward to another great live stream. Nothing but love from Florida. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming to hang out from the great state of Florida. And then um, Glenn Williams says, is Scott, I guess he is it fertilizer. Is, is Scott's fertilizer any good? Um, it depends on what you're trying to go for. I mean, there's a lot of people that use um, Scott's fertilizer and gets a good result with it. Um, it is, it's, it's a different, like Scott's fertilizer is designed for, um, Best way, to, best way to say this. It's not, it's it's designed for like for like residential use and for people that are just gonna walk into a big box store and want something that they can they can apply to their lawn once or twice per season and then get a pretty good result. So what you tend to find with the, a lot of the fertilizers is they tend to be extended release. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to use, you don't have to apply them quite as much. Um, so it's a different approach. If you're, if you're someone that doesn't really like getting out there and putting fertilizer on your lawn, um, and you just kind of want something like you, you apply it and just let it do its extended feeding, knowing that, you know, as far as the growth and colors, not going to be quite as consistent. It's certainly an option. Um, the, the, op, the, the fertilizers that we carry on the golf course lawn store, like the ones, um, from Lebanon, um, are really designed, um, to be, to be applied every, every, you know, four weeks, every four to six weeks. Um, that's why we recommend applying them at the lower rate. So once a month you apply them coupled with a spoon feeding program, which is what I like to do, uh, produces, in my opinion, superior results than what you would get out of fertilizers with the big box store. So it's not really comparable. You know, folks say, um, 
is a is a is a are Scott's fertilizers good? I I think for what they're designed for, they're they're fine. I think for what for what for the market they're designed for and for the results they're designed to produce, they are fine. Um, but for what what I like to do and what I'm trying to achieve, what I teach, and what I think most people that are on my live stream are, are after, they would not be a good fit. So it's not really it's not like really one is better or worse than the other. They are different approaches to to achieving very different results. If that makes sense. So it just really depends on on what you're after, Glenn, and you know, buy and apply accordingly. So that is what I would say. All right, um, Kevin L says, Ron, drove past your place on picking up the revolution. Your hill is no joke, and the lawn is looking great. Why well, I appreciate that, Kevin. I'm glad that the the lawn passed your uh, your test when you picked up your mower. And then next up is Larry L. Yeah, this is Larry L L R. Uh, CXD says, Hey, Ron, happy Friday. Soil test came back with everything optimal except for sulfur. Um, 7.0 to 16.0 is optimal, minus 29.44. What to do, if anything? I, I really wouldn't worry about it, um, Larry. What I would say is if you can avoid uh, um, adding you know, um, additional sulfur, that would be good, but uh, but it's not something that I would really, I'd really worry about. In other words, there's not really an easy way for you to lower sulfur in a vacuum without affecting the other nutrients. So I, I just really wouldn't worry about it. If you can avoid high sulfur fertilizer, that would be good, but nothing to worry about. Last I looked at your lawn, it looks pretty incredible. So what you're doing is uh, is absolutely working. I would I would stick with it. All right, next up is Coach Andrews. Um, he says, um, came to YouTube and searched for top dressing to show a friend what it was. I found this page and now I am locked in. Uh, I run a landscaping company in OKC, and after one video, I can tell um, it's going to be a good follow. I hope so, uh, Coach uh, Coach Andrews. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I I enjoy working on my lawn. I enjoy sharing, you know, what I've learned over the years with folks. And the, the cool thing is that a lot of other people have followed, um, you know, the program and also get great results on their lawns too. So again, I appreciate you being a new follower. And again, if I can help with anything, do not uh, don't hesitate to to reach out. So good stuff. I appreciate that. Robert Rainey, the man, the myth, that guy is in the live stream. I'm going to start saying that. That guy has entered the live stream. What's going, what's going on, Robert? What, nothing, you don't have anything crazy to show us this week? Not like um, some some crazy, com, like obscure con, contraption for lawn care that you, you tend to find to show the to show the crowd or you're just hanging out? All right. Um, next up, we have Jared George. He says, I'm just a bit hesitant and unsure when I should core aerate and top dress based on the temperatures and growth we have. 70s in the day, but we are still getting cold at night, some lows in the 40s. Yeah, Jared, so if that's the case, you know, wait till like maybe mid-May, you know? I mean, in Georgia, you could top dress, you're ending the time to, to do it now if you wanted to, but if you're a few weeks behind us, wait till mid-May, that's gonna be that's gonna be just fine too. There's no, uh, no problems at all with doing that. All right, the two Trilla from Manila says, hey, Ron, a strap action gang. I promised the wife I wouldn't purchase any lawn equipment this year. What, he, let me ask you a question. Why do you make promises where you possibly set yourself up for failure? Why, why would you, why would you, I mean, okay, whatever. Anyway, he says, but after watching you and the Revolution 26 put on some work, I will make an exception. There you go. There you go. I mean, don't make promises you can't keep, man. I, again, this, I mean, if you got to like August and say, sweetheart, you know what? We're in August and I'm just really not buying any lawn equipment this year, that's a reasonable statement to make. But you're gonna, at the, it's the beginning of the season, man. It's like April, you're gonna say, yeah, we're not buying anything this year. And in April, I don't know. That's a, um, again, that's a, that's, that's a lot of dedication, man. I don't, I don't know that I would, I would make that, that kind of promise, but at least hopefully she co-signs you, um, you know, co-signs you getting, getting the revolution. It would not be a bad one, uh, a bad acquisition. Again, I, I, and I'm not saying that because, um, Real Rollers gave me one. It's, it really, I am really impressed with all the improvements from the mower last year to what is being delivered now. It's uh, they got a lot of stuff right with that mower, especially at the price point. Especially at the price point. That's the thing about it that's, that's especially compelling. All right, so we have a super chat. Let me get down here and grab this one really quick. This one is from Mr. Luis Ayabareño. He's in the house. What's going on, Luis? Super chat for C. He says, Ron, finally going in the Midwest. To question you just answered, lawn green up faster than others, mowed five times while most doing their first, has to be Humic Max and Essential G, I sent you a pick, not bad for Rotary, may have to graduate to a real soon. Yeah, you may have to graduate to a real soon. I mean, now here's the thing, ooh, goodness gracious. I mean, you didn't, here's the thing, you gotta warn me. Before you send pictures like this, you gotta, I can't, I'm not, like, look, you can see like this, the, the, it just lights up. 
Um, you got to warm me for you sending something that looks like looks like good, man. Wow, 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 wow. Um, but yeah, I will I will tell you this, Luis. Um, can you real mo or should you real mo? I mean, it's it's really up to you. I will tell you that there's not a whole lot of going back once you decide to go down that that road because it's it. There's, I mean, there, in my opinion, there's nothing really that cuts like a real mower, as far as just the just the the, the results you can produce. Um, I mean, they are there is more involved with using them, but as far as just an amazing result, it's tough. It's really tough to beat what a what a real what a real mower can do. All right, I'm trying to find the picture you just sent to me so I can show the folks, show the folks them. All right, here we go. Um, that looks good. So let me see. So you said you have to be able to accomplish this. You have put out Humic Max. I can I endorse that. You've done Essential G. Also, I, I am in alignment with this. And then uh, regular mowing. So all that work has got the lawn looking like like it is. Uh, let me bring this up. Mm -mm -mm. That's fire, man. I don't care who you are. Now, here's the thing. Now, you might say, eh, it's green. It's nice. Not that impressive. However, if you look at the lawn in the background, this is what I always do, right? I mean, because I'm, you know, kind of vain like that. You got to look at how the competition is looking. So if you look at the lawn in the background at like two o'clock in the picture, you see how that one is still kind of, I don't know, looks, I won't say dormant, but just it's not, not living, not looking great, not living its best life. Whereas Luis's lawn is kicking, looking really good. Um, so yeah, you are doing the work, man. It looks awesome. Great, great work. Keep going. It's early. and the thing is, think about this the way, Luis. It's it's early in the season. Like the season isn't really going full steam yet, and it's looking uh, that awesome. Looking that awesome. So it's only going to get that much better. And remember when I told you this? It, you said, I remember when you started. I think it was like was it, maybe it was last year when you first started um, on the program that 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 I I talk about that I teach. Um, and I said, you know, you're going to like the results you get in year one, but year two it's going to be even better. Like you're going to start out further ahead of the curve and it's just gonna like no one's gonna be able to catch you like you're gonna like it gets better it compounds it gets better and better the longer you do it and i in my opinion the uh you know the pictures are proof in the pudding it looks looks pretty awesome again thank you for the super, super chat, chat received. and you have another follow-up here he says also thanks for the products super got received. items this week awesome glad to hear that everything made it to you safe and sound the team is doing doing their job I don't have to get I don't have to be mean and be like, hey guys, why folks ain't getting their stuff? You know how they are. You know that you know you guys are a demanding bunch. You want your stuff when you you want your stuff like hours after you order it, right? So awesome. Thank you for sharing the pictures, Luis. It really does mean a lot. You know, you know why that matters so much? Why why I really get excited about um looking at pictures from other people's lawns is because it's really easy to say to look at my lawn and be like, okay, yeah, your lawn looks great. You know, it's a it's like a sample of one. And, you know, I've been working on it for a while, so it should look good. I spent a lot of time on it, so it should look good. But whenever someone that I've never met before in real life can take the content, can take the uh, like the video content and also the content that's on the store, all the blog posts that we write and the, and the, the new strip programs that we put together and take that and follow that on a cool season lawn. So it's not even like, it's not even Bermuda. It's not even like for like. It's a different type of grass and still get what I would consider incredible results. That that really, uh, that that hits good. You know, so that's that's awesome. So... Keep it going. I really do appreciate when you guys send me pictures because it's um, you know, it just it just really shows that the, the the it's one thing to be able to do something for yourself, but to be able to teach someone else how to do it and they get, you know, great results is what really matters. So good, good, good stuff. I really appreciate it. All right, next up is um A Hey Star eleven forty one says, um, my lawn is greened up and growing vigorously in Minnesota due to spring weather. Is it time for Primo? Could be. Uh, typically, I have used it in the summer, but with the lawn growing fast, it seems like the time is right. Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, a Star is um, if you are out mowing the lawn regularly. So if your lawn is, let's say your lawn looks like how Luis's lawn looks. If Luis says, "Hey man, I, this is how my lawn is looking. Should I use growth regulator now?" I'm like, uh, "Yeah, you absolutely can use. That, that's a great, great candidate for for Primo Max." And you know, you said you used it last year during the summer. I find it's um, it works better if you introduce it to the plant early. So it's like start now. And you can slowly, if you need to, you can slowly ramp the rate up as the season progresses. Um, that's going to that's gonna reduce the chances of you having discoloration, like the tip burn that you get from the first time you spray it. Um, but yes, that's your question. If you're out regularly mowing the lawn, and if you want to use Primo now, you absolutely can. There's nothing nothing holding you back from doing that. No problems at all at all with that. The, the, the thing, the test you want to pass is, are you regularly mowing it? Is it largely greened up and doing well? In your case, I, mean, I haven't seen a picture of your lawn, but I gave you an example. If it looks like how Luis's lawn looks, 
then um, yeah, then yeah, by all means, by all means, go for it. By all means, go for it. All right, next up is Brian Tanner. He says, good evening, Ron. Evening, Brian. Hopefully you're doing all right. And the next up is Ryan Babich. Ryan Babich, he says, um, hey, Ron, what's a good way to identify nut sedge? I have cool season grass and I'm not sure if it's nut sedge or maybe rye grass, not sure, thanks for the help. Um, hmm. uh, you, so you can take a picture, if you send, take a picture of it and send it to me, I can take a look at it and tell you what I think. You can also take a picture of it and go to Google image search. So like images.google.com, I think is what it is. You, put, you paste it in there and it'll give you, a, it does a reasonably good job of identifying um, you know, um, what you got going on in your lawn this time of year. I mean, it could be nut sedge. It could also, I mean, if there's, it could also be POA. Um, if there's no, if there's no white, um, seed heads, no, no white flower heads, then it's, then maybe not POA very well could be nut sedge, but, um, but yeah, I'd say an image search would be a great way to, to go about it. So let me show you some pictures here really quick. So this is, if I can do this. So if it looks like, and again, there's different types of sedges. This is, um, there's different ones. If it looks like that with the white seed heads there in the middle, that's Poannua. And if it looks like that, so long, um, like the, 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 the grass, the blaze of the grass are almost more shiny in color um, and looks like this. And this is more, this is your, your sedges. So Poa, um, go back here. So Poannua, annual bluegrass and uh, sedges. So, but again, take a picture of it, throw it into your, um, into Google image search and it'll give you a pretty good idea. Or you can email me and say, hey Ron, what do you think about this? And I'll tell you what I think. So, so hope that helps. Um, if you have, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what I would do. Um, I would look at, um, I would look at that. Look at, take a picture, put it in image search and then it'll, it'll give you a pretty good idea of which is, which is which. Uh, the thing you can keep in mind too is that, well, it's true for Poa annua too, like sedges, that's one thing that's common for both sedges and Poa. The wetter areas of your lawn is where they tend to grow, particularly nut sedge, like, like areas where the lawn either drains or water settles, that those damp areas is where sedges and also Poa um, tend, to, tend to take hold. So it could be either one of them. All right, next up is Jason Crawl. He says, um, do you recommend core aeration or large spike aeration on real mode Bermuda lawns. Okay, yeah, so from a standpoint of relieving compaction, core aeration is superior in my opinion. Spike aeration, like I've done, I have a spike aerator with the, the outlet. Um, that's good for, say, if you're gonna go put, say, a fertilizer out, you're gonna put some kind of a soil, um, like a, a soil-based product out, like a fertilizer or granular biostimulant, or if you're trying to get more water into the into the soil profile, like a spike spike aeration can help. Um, I mean, technically, you are creating a bit of compaction around like the spikes. You think about it; you're not really you're not removing any soil. So if you're you're basically mashing, you're basically you know spiking and mashing that 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 small area down. Like the the soil's got to go somewhere. So as far as relieving compaction, it's not as good, in my opinion, as core aeration. Um, visually, it's not as disruptive. I've done both ways. I've done both ways. Like last year, I did uh, spike aeration using the outlet, and um, year prior to that, I did core aeration. So I've done both, and given the choice, I think for most people, core aeration is the way to go. Even if you don't want to, if you don't want to do it yourself, you can hire a service to do it for you. Uh, core aeration is, is what I would, would lean to, because as far as, um, it, core aeration has all the benefits of spike aeration, um, and the only real negative being that visually it is more disruptive. It looks like it looks more ugly than if you do you do spike aeration. Like spike aeration, if I go and spike aerate the lawn, like I can I could do that this weekend if you guys want to see what it looks like. If you, if I go out and do that, unless you actually go up and look at it, you're not like from a distance, you're not really going to be able to see that it was done. Whereas core aeration, you're going to tell the lawn was core aerated. Like it, it's there's no doubt in my in your mind that that happened. So. Um, they serve different purposes. I think if if you core aerated once in once per season, and if you wanted to spike aerate um, a couple times on top of that, like particularly before you're about to put a fertilizer out or any kind of soil based product out, that would be good. But um, but for relieving compaction, core aeration is superior. So hope that helps, Jason. Um, they're just they're different. They they serve different purposes in my in um in my in my my opinion. They're not they're not they're not the same. They're not like things. Similar but not the same. All right, um, Osman says, my brother-in-law says it looks like like St. Augustine. Okay, 
Um, but yeah, again, the herbicides that I recommended earlier, they still it still stands. You wouldn't you wouldn't use tenacity on a on a residential St. Augustine lawn. Again, Celsius or Celsius for broadleaf control, certainty for sedge and poanua control. Again, depending on what you're trying to control is what you would you'd use either or both of those products. All right. Um, next up, Osman says, I also did get a couple Celsius packets due to watching your channel. Nice. That should do a good, pretty good result for you. The thing I would say, Oz, if um, to really get the best possible results with Celsius, use some surfactant with it. Use surfactant with it. I mean, for pretty much, for most post-emergent herbicides, surfactant is a good addition. Like an exception to that is this. Like the velocity, if you guys get this, some of you guys have cool season lawns, do not use surfactant with this. Like it's like it's on the label. Um, it's on their guidance on the website. And when I was talking to the new farm rep, he also specifically I mentioned, he says, yeah, no surfactant whenever using Velocity. No, just don't, no need to do it. Don't use surfactant of any kind with it. Just, just the product, water. If you want to use a little bit of dye to be able to see where you're spraying, that's fine too. But no, um, no spreader sticker, no surfactants with it. All right, next up, we got Austin Ostriker. He says, um, Ron, I can't seem to get the time to spray my liquid for an app except in the heat of the day. Am I wasting my time and money? No, not really, Austin. I mean, it's, you're, you're still getting it down. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it still works. I mean, this time of year, it's not really that hot outside. So if you sprayed in the middle of the day, it's really not going to be that much of a difference. I mean, the big, the big negative, I would say, to spraying in the middle of the day is it tends to be like the wind, like as far as breeze tends to be higher um, when the, the, the hotter parts of the day than in the evening or in the early morning time. So from that standpoint of like managing, like not having issues with like drift, like the product blowing all over the place, like that's a, a big positive to spraying either in the morning or spraying in the evening. Um, but no, you're not wasting your time and money. If you, if you only have time to get out there and spray when it's 10 or 11 a.m., get out there and spray when it's 10 or 11 a.m. I mean, that's still, still fine. I mean, the, 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 the services around here that um, the lawn care services that spray the lawns in this neighborhood, they're out here all times a day, morning, I mean, morning, middle of the day, evening, whenever they get out here and do it is when they do it. So it's um, the big thing I would, I would just say is that you are more likely to encounter breeze and, um, you know, drift is more likely to be an issue um, in the hotter parts of the day. But outside of that, you know, whenever you can do it, get out there and, uh, and, and do that. Uh, you are very welcome, Osman. No problem at all. My pleasure. And then Andre Taylor is up next. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. In Georgia, I have some weeds starting to pop up in Bermuda despite pre-emergent earlier this year. Should I blanket treat or just spot treat? Uh, depends on the weed you're talking about. Um, if you, to, to add your question, if you can get by with spot spraying, I'm always going to push you towards that than blanket spraying. You know, if you, you know, it, blanket spraying really should be reserved for like a lawn renovation or a lawn, so you just moved into a house and the, the lawn sat for a while and never and nothing was you know nothing was done to it, no treatments were done to it. That's what you, where you really want to go with with blanket spraying. If you've got like a cool season lawn and it's overrun with poanua, like with for example, if you're spraying something like like Velocity, like this is designed to be blanket sprayed. Um, like they have like guidance on the label, they have like separate documents all about blanket spraying it. Um, so in it, so blanket spraying should be reserved for when. Weeds are, there's an infestation of weeds throughout the entire lawn. If you have like a few areas here and there where you've got like clumps of weeds, I would either pull them or do spot spraying. Because even though herbicides are, if you use the herbicide that is labeled as, as safe or labeled for use on your particular grass type, it's still a stressor. You know, if you use Celsius, Celsius is an excellent herbicide for worms using turf grass, but it's still a stressor. It's still more stressful to the grass than not, than just pull than just pulling the weed or, or not doing anything. So, um, you know, in general, if you can avoid blanket spraying, I would do so. I would, I would, I would stick with spot spraying um, whenever, whenever you can. All right, Andre Jennings is up next. He says, actually, I can do here. Um, Andre Jennings, uh, Gerald Jennings, I'm sorry, is up next. He says, Ron, <laughs> he says, should certainty and Celsius be used as a blanket spray application? It can be, if ne if needed. Um, if it, if you don't need a blanket spray of the lawn, kind of like the answer, question I just answered earlier, um, you shouldn't. So if you've got a few areas of the lawn that, you know, that have both like some spurge in it and have some sedges in it, then yes, you can mix the two of them and you can spot spray those areas. If the entire lawn, like again, to use example, you got a lawn that's been neglected, 
or you didn't do your pre-emergent app, or you, or you missed time your pre-emergent apps, you've got a lot of a lot of wheeze all throughout the lawn. In that case, yes, a blanket spray. But as a as a general rule, um, really, it's not something you should have to do very often. Like if you blanket spray the lawn with that combination at the correct rates, it should be a one-time thing. And then if there's a few weeds here and there, you should be able just to spot spray. You shouldn't have to be blanket spraying the lawn every month or even or even you know regularly. Like Celsius and certainty when sprayed at the correct rates are, are very effective herbicides for cleaning up the majority of weeds that you're gonna, you're gonna encounter. So if you need to, yes. If you don't need to, then I, I wouldn't. So great question, uh, Gerald, as far as a uh, blanket and <laughs> blanket and, and spot spraying. Again, if you can, like to put it, put it in perspective this way, right? Like um, I pretty much use certainty on my lawn every year because there's a couple of areas of the lawn where I get sedges every year um, and I just spot spray those areas. I don't blanket spray like the areas where I get, because I get, I've, got sed, I've got sedges in those, one, in those, in those, those two or three spots, I don't go out and blanket spray the entire lawn with certainty, I just spray the areas that have, that have the problem, you know what I mean? So it's almost like saying if you have, you know, if you, if you, can, if you can isolate a treatment to like a particular part of your body that has the problem, you would do that versus like doing something that that affects your entire body, right? Same kind of thing. Blanket spraying is really reserved for lawns that are a bit of a mess and just need to be to be cleaned up. So the, the example I always give is like my neighbor next door, whenever they moved in, um, the previous neighbor moved out and, and there was no lawn care service for like for about half a season. So it was quite a mess. Um, so whenever um, they asked me if I, I could help them clean up their lawn, I it got a blanket spray. It got prodiamine, it got Celsius, it got certainty, and then it got some spot spraying after that with certainty to, to finish off the um, the poanua that was in the lawn. So that is a situation where blanket spraying is appropriate because the lawn's just it's a mess. The entire thing is just covered in weeds, and you know if you spot spray, you're gonna be spot spraying the whole lawn. So that's a case where blanket spraying makes sense. But after that there was no need to blanket spray the entire lawn again. You may find some areas that need it, but as, as far as like doing the entire thing, shouldn't be necessary if you are, um, you know, if you if you are mixing the herbicides properly, spraying them at the correct rates, you shouldn't be having to hammer the lawn constantly with herbicides to keep the weeds at bay. Also, you, like I was, like I've said it in some of my videos in the past, is like some of the best weed control is growing a thick and healthy stand of turf grass. Like if you have a nice and thick, healthy lawn, it makes it really difficult for weeds to establish. So there's also that as well too. All right, next up we got Adam Parker is in the house. He says, hey Ron, I have Tiff Tuff in my yard. We added drainage line to the downspouts. Any fear in cleaning up with Tiff with 419 in those areas with the color differences due to availability? Thanks in advance. Yeah, so here's the thing. I would, um, you know, it's gonna be a slower process, but unless you got, unless you know that your lawn was planted with certified Tiffway 419, um, and then you're also gonna go to another side of farm that has certified Tiffway 419, it's, it's you are rolling the dice on if it's gonna match or not. So if you want to ensure it's absolutely gonna match, what I would suggest is to just plug the area. Take plugs from the parts of the lawn that are doing well, and transfer them to the areas that um, that you just you had the damage from putting the drainage in. Because I mean, you get a few pieces of sod, it might match okay, but it might not. And again, with Bermuda, once it's in, it's in. So you're, you know, I, I don't know that I would take that risk personally. I would be patient and just just you know transfer plugs in there and just give it time to uh, to grow in. So hope that helps, Adam. Great great question. I mean, I've I've seen it. I've experienced it personally with Tiffway 419 saw that's supposed to match, but it doesn't. And I have a neighbor that like a whole section of their lawn has two different variants of, tif of Tiffway 419. So it's, I'm not telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what I have personally experienced and someone else that I, I that's about a nine iron away from me that's, that has the exact same thing in his lawn. And all he can do now is live with it because there's not, again, unless you're gonna renovate and start all over, there's just not a whole lot you can do about it once it's, um, once it's in. All right, next up is Thomas Wharton. Thomas Wart, or Wart Mann says, um, my soil is over my sidewalks. Any suggestions on how to correct that or do I have to get a sod cutter and regrade? Mm. Your soil is over your sidewalk. Do you mean that if this is your sidewalk, um, the soil or the lawn is higher than the sidewalk? Um, if that's the case, depending on how extreme it is, yeah, you may have to, and if you want it to be a little bit closer, then yeah, you may have to get a sod cutter, um, removes, you know, 
get, fold the sod back, remove some material, and repl replace the sod. I got to tell you though, Thomas, I'm a fan personally of the lawn being either even or slightly higher than the sidewalk or driveway. Reason being is that you are far less likely to damage your mower, if you're real mowing, far less likely to damage your mower if the lawn is a little bit higher um, because you can, like you've got the hardscape here and when you're mowing, like the reel can almost even just hang off a little bit and there's not like any concrete for it to get nicked on. And another thing to consider is um, like drainage. So if you ever see a lawn sometimes where like you'd say this is your driveway or sidewalk and this is the lawn and it's low, whenever you get rainfall and the water runs off the sidewalk, guess where it's going to settle? Like that area right there, right, right up against the sidewalk or driveway, um, you're going to have water settling there which leads to all kinds of problems. So given the choice between the two, either even or slightly higher is what I'm a fan of. It drains better. It's easier to mow. Um, you know, so again, I, I haven't seen your lawn. I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if it's like you know, foot higher, or six inches higher, then yeah, you, you're probably gonna wanna, you know, remove some material and get it a little bit closer. But even when you regrade, I would still bias towards keeping the lawn a little bit higher, even if it's like, you know, half an inch, an inch higher than the, than the sidewalk or driveway for the reasons that I just mentioned. All right, next up is um, Ozman, he is back. And his comment and or question is, is, is there any way to scalp my grass when I have an old school riding mower and many slopes and is there any way to not scout my grass? I'll start over. Osman has a question. He says, is there any way to not scout my grass when I have an old school riding mower and many slopes and hills on my yard? I can send you pics. I'm not sure how. Yeah, so as far, it depends on how, how, how bad of a slope we're talking about here, how bad the grade is. I mean, you obviously wanna be careful if you're on a riding mower with it not, you know, you don't want to get to the point where you, it can tip over for so for safety reasons, you want to be careful. But I can tell you what I find produces a, a good cut when you're mowing a sloped lawn. Um, and actually, you can you can see it. I can show you in the pictures here too. Let me see if I can show you on video. So come on, speed up. If you look right here, you can see how I mow my lawn. Okay, perfect. See, talking is one thing, but but a bit of video or pictures worth a thousand words. So you see how the lines, the stripes are diagonal like mowing a pattern like that, I find to be the best of both worlds. <clears throat> because if you mow lengthwise, if you mow lengthwise, like say this is the slope and you mow lengthwise like this, what you're gonna find is the side of the mower that is lower is going to cut a little bit lower than the side that is on the higher side. Um, and then going straight uphill or straight downhill, just for safety reasons, I don't really recommend that. Um, so the best cut that I find you produce, you can get on a slope, is mowing diagonally. You're, you're like, you're, you're splitting the weight more evenly across the surface when the mower is running over it. The only thing you have to be careful of is, um, again, I don't know how, how extreme your slope is, because if you're going sideways, you don't want to do anything where the mower could tip over. You know, if you, so it's got to be a slope that is not so so steep that when you're going sideways, there's a chance of the mower, um, you know, you flipping over and there being a problem. So again, the, the picture that I showed or the um, the image that the video I showed you right there um, is what kind of kind of illustrates what I'm talking about. I find mowing um, length and mowing diagonally produces the best results. So if you can, if you look really closely, you can see where I've done cuts lengthwise, um, which again works okay. But and whenever I whenever I finish cutting the lawn lengthwise, I I always finish up with a diagonal cut because what you tend to get is, um, and again, it depends on how picky you are. I'm, I'm pretty picky, but if you, depending on how picky you are, you'll see it. Whenever you mow like lengthwise like this, you get like this stepped like terracing effect um, with, the, with the mower going across the lawn on a slope. Whereas when you mow like this, it tends to be more even. As you can tell in the, in the, in the picture in the video I just showed you, like you, it looks like nice and smooth and there's not any high or low spots, there's no scalping. So if you can, and if your slope will permit it, mowing diagonally, I find produces the best results on a slope. So, so give that a shot, Ozman. Again, assuming that you can safely do that and uh, and see how that, that works out for you. All right, next up is uh, Josue Araya. He says, um, hey, Ron, just one month after spoon feeding with uh, Lebanon 14714, Essential G, 901C, Carbon Kit, and Nutrizol, the lawn is nice and green. I sent pics. I still need to level, though. Um, you sent pics, pictures, you say, eh? Let us see if I can find any pictures from you. Um, Joshua, uh, let's see if I can find your email first of all. Um, oh yeah, color looks good, man. It's still early in the season, but uh, yeah, I can I can definitely see it. 
I can definitely see it. I can see the fruits of your labor. Let's, um, if I can show uh, your picture here. See, date modified, that one. All right, yeah. Color looks awesome, man. Nice and dark. Uh, so yeah, so these are two pictures of his lawn. Um, picture one, actually it's two of the same thing. He sent me the same thing twice, I think. All right, so this is picture one of his lawn um, with that stack. Again, the 14714 14, Essential G and release 901C. Color looks great, nice and dark. I am liking that. Good job. And then there is a, another shot that he sent, which I'll show you guys here as well too. And get a look, looks pretty good. Yeah, looks nice, man. And you know what's funny is you can see also the parts of the lawn that get more sunlight. So if you look at the, if you look at his house, um, if you look at his house, the lawn that is, that's to the right, that's along the side of the house. I'm not sure how the sun passes over your, over your property, but I would venture to say that that part is getting a little bit less sunlight than the front lawn, because you can see a noticeable difference in color and just how much further the front, the, the front front is, um, going as far how much further ahead it is than that side section. So good job, man. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. I had another picture of a lawn to show you guys. Tom V, also another viewer that is on that golf course lawn program. He's another cool season grass guy. Or no, is, is, is he Bermuda? Or no. So this, he's he's a I think he is a fescue guy. Um so there you go. You can see the color there. Looks looks really nice. Um sent me a nice nice shot from the street. Lawn is looking fabu. Um, but yeah, yeah, this, the lawns this year are, are waking up nicely with, uh, with that combination. The, the, again, the one negative, um, uh, Josue, you know, like I said, with spoon feeding is that it does take more work. So instead of being out there once on the lawn, you're out there every, um, you know, every two weeks, but it's really hard to argue with the results. So good work. Looks really nice. And you said the lawn is mowed at one and a quarter inches. Cool. Very good. All right, Noak95 is up next. It says, um, good evening, gentlemen. Ron, does Primo Max require watering in? Also, any recommended products to help with magnesium deficiency? Uh, yeah, so Primo, no. It does not need to be watered in after application. It works by foliar uptake. So you would mix Primo Max with Release 901C, whatever fertilizer, whatever liquid fertilizer of your choice. You would spray it and allow it to dry on the lawn. There's no need to water Primo Max in. So that's thing one. And then as far as um, a magnesium deficiency, uh, there are some, so there are fertilizers that have magnesium in them. So you could simply apply a fertilizer with magnesium. Um, if your soil pH is low when you need to do a lime application, you could also, you could also go that route too. You could apply a fertilizer that has um, like a dolomitic lime will have a higher magnesium content than, um, than a calcitic. So there's a couple of different ways of, 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 of going about that. So it just, um, you know, again, a product that has magnesium is what I would say. For, there's fertilizers that have magnesium in them. There are, and then there are lime products, assuming you need that, that have um, lime in them. I'm trying to check here and see if, um, if any of the Lebanon fertilizers have it. I, I want to say maybe the greens grade ones do. Let me check here, make sure I'm not a liar to you. Yeah, so, so yeah, so for example, if you look at the 12024, like um, this guy right here, this one has a little bit of magnesium in it. So I pulled up the label. Let me see where's that under how to use the label. And you can see it has, um, it has some magnesium, like half a percent of magnesium in there. And if we look at the other, the 14714, we'll see if this one has some magnesium in it as well. I, let's see, I believe so, but we'll see. Yeah, so that one has 1.5% magnesium. So yeah, so, so, so the answer to your question would be, a fertilizer or some other product with magnesium in it is what I would, um, is what is the way that I would want to go, um, Noic. So good stuff. So to answer your question, no, Prima doesn't need watering in. And then second, um, they just apply something with, uh, apply a product with magnesium to help correct that deficiency. All right. Uh, Nola Big Man has a question here from the Instagram says, what percentage of my grass needs to be green before I core aerate? I mean, what I would say is this, a better, a better way of, um, 
of answering that is if you're mowing it, if you're regularly mowing it, then you can core aerate. I mean, here's the thing. You, you can you can core aerate before the lawn is fully greened up. It's just not gonna recover very quickly. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you could actually slow down how quickly it recovers. So if you wait until the lawn is actively growing, so you're out there mowing it regularly, that is the um, the benefit of that is that it's going to it's going to grow through it, grow through the stress, the damage from coloration faster. But it's not like you're committing some cardinal sin if you if you aerate the lawn a little bit early. I've done it a bunch of different ways. I've I've aerated my lawn as early as like the first week of March, um, and I've aerated like this time of year. And what I've found is whenever um, you do it a little bit later, so like April time frame, is the lawn just grows through it faster. If you do it earlier, it just takes longer for the lawn to recover. But it's not like you have to have it, you know, particularly, you know, like some particular percentage you're after um, before you can core aerate. Waiting a little bit longer tends to work better, but it, again, it, it'll be fine either way. All right, next up is No Name. He says, hey, Ron and Alon enthusiast, looking forward to some great turf talk. Let's get those likes up. All right, I appreciate that, No Name. All right, and uh, yeah, let's do that. If you guys have not hit the like button, please do that. It costs absolutely nothing. It's a free way to support uh the channel and then uh next up we got um a super chat from this one's from mr adam carter super chat for he says hey ron can you look at these pictures i sent you and what you what do you think is wrong i have um irrigation irrigation the drops that hit this area are big and i don't know if they're beating the grass i, I tell you what adam i'll have to take a look so I can find it really quickly, but if not, I may have to take a look and answer your question after the show. Um, what am I looking at here? Um, yeah, I, I don't. I'm looking at the pictures, but I'm not sure what I'm what I'm looking at. Let me. I can bring it up. We can, we can do a live show and tell. Why not? All right. So you're asking. Your your at your question is what I think is wrong. The irrigation drops are hitting this area are big, and you're not sure if it's hurting the grass. Um, so what I'm seeing here, um, Adam, unless, unless I'm looking at the right picture, yeah, this does not. I mean, this I, this is probably something else other than the irrigation, the irrigation that's going on. Actually, you know what? Your picture it was not you didn't send it to me. Actually, I may have to look these after the show, man, because they're also in the wrong they're in the wrong orientation to be able to show them easily they need to be in they need to be in landscape um so um let me actually i can resize it really quick i can i can do that i have the technology all right so um so this is a, one of the pictures you sent to me and it just looks like the grass isn't growing there yet man i mean just looking looking at this it's a it's hard to say like why that area is lagging behind i mean it looks like the lawn is waking up i mean looking looking at the the area, I mean, near the patio or the sidewalk or whatever that is, it looks like it's starting to green up along like the like the fencing or that little um, guard is starting to green up. So it, it, it just might be a patience thing. It looks like you might, is that zoysia? If it's zoysia, you may just give it a bit more time to, uh, to grow in because like along the sidewalk it's growing and then further up the picture, it's beginning to grow. So it's just might be a time thing, man. It might not have anything to do with your, your irrigation controller from what I'm I'm seeing. This is like the grass just isn't started really filling in in that spot yet based on what I am um based on what I'm seeing. So hopefully that helps. Thank you for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. Um but yeah I don't without seeing more I I I can't say that what I'm seeing there I would really blame on the irrigation uh controller. So uh so again thanks for the super chat really do appreciate it. All right next up we have Fairway Bermuda. We have Daryl. He's in the house. Uh, no name says, remember to hit the thumbs up. And then Daryl is up next. He says, hey, Ron and everyone. I wanted to go with an organic fertilizer, so I ordered the Miramichi Triple uh, Four from the store plus Primo Max and want to give it a try. You'll like the results you get with it, Daryl. So I ran the Triple Four on the front lawn last season. Really like the results I got with it. The thing you find, and it's kind of to be expected, is that um, it's it starts working. It's a little bit slower to begin working compared to say like something like Humic Max or the other Lebanon fertilizers. Uh, but it once it once it it you know it begins to break down, it produces a great color. It's got um, it's got iron in it. It's, it's a really nice package. It's got iron, got humate um, in there. They also put a microbial package in it as well. So it's a, it's a very quality product. 
I think you're gonna like the results that you get that you get with it. And then Primo, I mean, all I can say is there's life before growth regulator and life afterwards. And once you start with it, you will wonder why you waited so long. Only piece of advice I'd give you when it comes to Primo is um, is start slow. Like so, so go out at half rate. And in my opinion, what you know, you have, I've seen your lawn. You have a hybrid Bermuda lawn. Just spray it at half rate every two weeks. Like that, I find works really well. You avoid the 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 issue with like the bronzing, the tip burn that you get like the initial time you spray it. If you do that, and it just it just works better. You never have to worry about the lawn really coming out of regulation. It's a it's a good way of going about it. So, the only negative is you got to be out there twice spraying your lawn. But for you, I don't think that's going to be a problem. So, appreciate the support, sir. Glad that you um you're gonna try the trip before. Keep me posted as far as how it does for you. Jared George is back. He says, with liquid spoon feeding for liquid fertilizer, I got a nice T-Jet tip for a foliar spray, but I was wondering, should I mix surfactant or should it only be used for herbicides? Yeah, as in general for spraying um, fertilizer, at least the ones that we carry on the golf course lawn store, there's no need to add a surfactant with them. You really wanna, you'd wanna limit the, the spreader sticker or surfactant to herbicide use. You don't need to use um, herbicide, I'm sorry, you need to use a, a surfactant whenever you are spraying uh, liquid fertilizer, whenever you're spraying growth regulator, no need to add surfactant, just spray them as they are, allow them to dry, and you're good to go, Jared. No need to, um, no need to complicate things. You don't need to, no need to fix something that doesn't need fixing. It's uh, the products are designed to, to work as is, no need for any kind of adjuvants to be, to be added to them. They should, should work just fine. Um, assuming you mix them properly and spray at the correct rates, should be a problem at all. Uh, James Smith says, where are the likes tonight? I know, right, James? We're like 140 people in here. Well, 130 likes. I mean, it's it's we're catching up, but normally we're a little bit ahead, further ahead than that, you know? So I don't know. Maybe you guys just don't like me as much anymore. I'll just live with it. All right, Lewis P. Uh, 86 says, I have a four gallon sprayer from Petra. Is it possible to add on quick connects for the different nozzle tips? Thanks. You should be able to. Yeah, I mean, you might be able, you should be able to plumb like a disconnect on the end of it, like most most sprayers have a tip that is inter the tips can be interchanged. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Petras are the same way. So if you get yourself a set of like T Jet tips, you can just you get, it takes like I don't know 15 seconds if you're really slow to like you know to unscrew the cap, um, take the gasket out, put the new tip in, put the gasket back in, screw the cap back on, make sure it's oriented properly, and away you go. But if that's too much work, uh, or, or if you want to have like something you can like literally clip like snap in and out then yeah, you may have to do some plumbing to add like a quick connect, like female to the end of the wand. And then you can get like some of the, you know, the, the 45 disconnect, 45 sit, um, um, fittings that you can then just, you know, can easily swap in and out. But it sounds like a lot of work to me. I might just, just swap the spray tips. I might, that sounds like less, less headache personally. But in theory, yes, you should be able to. Should be able to do what you're after. All right, next up is Eric. Eric, he says, how do you keep your front lawn so green on a slope? Mine struggles, especially during the summer months. Any tips on slope lawns would be highly appreciated. Yeah, so the big thing um, I would say, Eric, is just like the way I mow it, right? So I um, I try to minimize scalping by mowing the lawn diagonally. And also you have to, every slope is different. You have to figure out what your particular lawn likes. So like my front lawn, the lowest that I can go on it and have it still look good is like five eighths, which is where it's at right now, right? So five eighths, like, like um, 0.62 inches, that's about as low as I can go with it and um, not have issues with scalping and, and just overall the color being looking nice. Several years ago when I was cutting at half an inch, um, the front lawn that year never really looked good. I mean, it, it, it cut okay. It, it, I mean, I had a few, anytime I had an area where, um, how can I describe it? I can actually show you guys. It's probably easier to show than, than talk. So um, whenever it comes around to the front, I'll show you really quickly here. I'll pause it. Okay, so you see the top of the hill there? So there's a sidewalk that's at the bottom. There's also a sidewalk at the top that goes through the front door. Like where the lawn crests, like where the lawn begins to go from a slope to flat to meet the sidewalk. Um, if I'm mowing, if I'm mowing much below the current cutting height, which is a five eighths, um, when it, when the mower goes over that, it's gonna scal it'll, it'll tend to, to scalp a little bit and discolor. So you, for your lawn, figure out like how low you can get away with. Most slopes you should be able to do three quarters of an inch without much issue, assuming that it's relatively level and smooth. Um, and outside of that, um, if you can, um, if you can verticut the lawn 
a couple times per season to help, you know, help prevent the lawn from getting spongy because that is going to also cause cutting problems. Uh, those those two things, diagonal mowing, um, verticutting, um, and or, or and or turf raking the lawn throughout the season is going to help. Uh, and that's that's really it. You have to figure out what your particular lawn likes. But but the, the big the big thing from a mowing standpoint is do not only mow the lawn like this way. This way might seem like lengthwise might seem like the easiest way to go. But I even again even on my lawn, which has been leveled to within an inch of its life, right? I've got it as pretty much as smooth as I can get it. Even now, if I go out there and I cut this way, if I go and I look, you'll still see where if I make a pass, let's say I make a pass like this the higher side of the of that pass is going to be just a little bit higher than the low side and the the only way i found to avoid that is to mow diagonally so that's why even if i if i do cut like this just to change things up i finish up with a a diagonal cut to um to really make the lawn look its best so um as far as green the color that is a combination of essential G, so I've got really good soil. Um, and then, so I, I run a good biosimilant program and then my spoon feeding program. So the, so the front lawn, I'll tell you, so the, for the front lawn this year, what has it had? It has had, um, it has had the 12024 fertilizer and it's been spoon fed with the 901C carbon kit. So I'll show you, I, I, I'll show you exactly what it's had. It's had um, the first fertilizer that hit the front lawn this year was, in March was this stress also zero twenty four. That's what the, that's what the entire lawn got, front lawn included. And then in March, starting on the fifteenth, it started getting fed every two weeks with this, with the nine hundred one C carbon kit. So it's three products: release nine hundred one C, Nutri Kelp, and Biospectrum. So every two weeks, it gets it gets that, and then of course um, a little bit of Nutrizol, a little bit of micronutrient in there um, for a little bit extra pop of color. But that's that's really it. Every two weeks. Um, spraying liquids and then just regular mowing. And then the front lawn is already under regulation with Primo. So um, the front lawn has already got growth regulator. That also helps tighten it up and really give it that nice, that nice um, dense, dense look, dense color. Again, like the 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 way the lawn is now. If I um, if you guys see my video of the revolution, actually I can link it in here in the chat. I do like my initial thoughts video of the of the, the revolution and you can see how much clippings came off of cutting. I cut the front lawn and I cut the vanity strip and I cut the swale area and like the amount of clippings that came out of the lawn are next to nothing. So I, I really can't stress enough. Like if you're someone that's going to real mow your lawn, um, especially at, you know, three quarters of an inch or lower, like growth regulator really makes a big difference in the appearance of the turf. It really does. I mean, it, it, it tightens it up. You get a deeper color. Um, it just, the turf just looks so much better when it's under regulation. And as far as like clippings that come off the lawn, it's, they're, they're drastically reduced. Like I think Syngenta like quotes it as like 50% reduction in clipping and clippings. And that's, that's about right. So I, I can actually, so I can show you guys here, um, where, so I can actually show you guys the amount of clippings that came off it. I think I've got a, I'll just take a screenshot and show you really quick. So um, okay. Yeah. So this is a perf perfect example. So I, can I screenshot that? I think so. Uh, da, 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 da. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. All right. So yeah. So this is an example of mowing the entire front lawn, mowing the swale area and mowing the vanity strip. And this shows what clippings came out of the lawn from, um, from that process. Um, once I got it right here. Yeah. So this is from that video and I'll, I'll link it in the chat in case you guys want to see to show you the effects that growth regulator can have on your lawn. So look at that. That's that's the um, that's the basket. You can see it's not even, I would call that what, an eighth, maybe a sixteenth full. There's hardly anything in there. So that, you know, that whenever, whenever you cut the lawn, it's almost like getting a haircut. The way, a good way of thinking about it is this way, right? If you wait until you need a haircut, like a guy, like your hair doesn't tend to look as good versus if you just, you cut your hair regularly. So if every week or every two weeks you go out and you get a haircut, no matter what, um, your, your hair just tends to look more, more, it just looks better than if you wait until your hair looks like all grown out and raggedy looking, then you go out and get a haircut. Not as good as if you just are always taking a little bit off. Your lawn is very much the same way. If you get there and you're mowing it, you're just taking a little bit off each time. You just, you know, you just, just, just the dust is coming off, as you can see from this screenshot, it tends to maintain its color because you're not taking as much clippings off. So you do, the color stay, tends to stay, tends to stay nice. Um, and that, that produces a, a lawn that looks like 
that looks like that, that produces that color. So what I would say is um, a good spoon feeding program to include Primo Max, to include a growth regulator. Like it really does make a, a, a big difference, a noticeable difference in the quality of your, um, of your lawn. If you guys want to see that video, I'll link it here in the chat for you guys as well, in case you, in case you're, in case you're interested. But, um, but yeah, that is, um, I, I can't, I just can't stress enough, like how important, how important, um, like the entire thing is, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's why I look for the next comment. You know, a lot of folks say, you know, like what, like what you do, like, how do you get the results that you get? It seems like it's a lot of stuff that you apply to your lawn. And the, the way I always counter that is it's not, it's not, it seems like a lot of stuff, but it's just really, it's a different approach to lawn care. You can't compare like what people that go in like that are on the Scott's program, which again, nothing wrong with doing that, or people that want to go to a big box store and put down fertilizer like two or three times a year to what, to what I do when I also teach in the lawn. It's a different approach. Like what I'm trying to get is to try and grow turf grass that rivals a golf course fairway at home. And to do that, you have to do the same processes that are used on golf courses to get the same results. So it's not like you, whenever you compare a regular program to like what we we teach on the golf course lawn store and what I talk about in a lot of my content, it's not really, you're not really comparing light things. You know what I mean? Like you're like, it's like, it's like comparing a Honda Civic to a Formula One car. Like they're both cars, but one is designed to do something very different than the other car. You know what I mean? So that's, that's the way you have to, um you have to look at it. The more, like what I do is more, there's more to it, but the results look better. So Hope that helps, Eric. Big thing is mow your lawn, use a good nutrient program with to include Primo Max and um, like again, mow diagonally. And over time, you should have a you should get a pretty good looking result. Um, and if you've not top dressed it to smooth out the lawn, that I'd say is also helpful as well too. That's going to reduce the chances of um, of scalping. And all the fertilizers, all the products that I talk about, um, you can find them here on the Golf Course Lawn Store if you are so interested. Fertilizer. I swear I cannot, I can never type whenever I am, um, whenever I'm streaming, multitasking, not all my strengths. All right. Uh, uh, next up is Steven Pina says, um, just got your kit in the mail and excited to see the results. Awesome. Pina, Steven, I think you will, you'll like it. Please keep me posted as far as how it, how it works for you. And then next up we have Veda Campbell. She says, hello, how do I get rid of Poanua in Bermuda? I'm on half an acre and I live in Texas. You didn't say the great state of Texas. Normally you'd say that, right? Anywhere in the, in the South, you got to say the great, you got to add the, like the great state of, you know, Georgia, the great state of Texas. You know, we're not going to say the great state of Alabama because that's where, you know, the Crimson Tide is from. So we don't claim that, but everywhere else you can say the great state of. Um, but yeah, to get rid of the, get rid of Poanua in your Bermuda, um, uh, certainty is the herbicide you're going to want to use. So you've got half an acre. Um, so um, this is what I would recommend, um, Veda. Uh, so this, this product, so certainty and surfactant. So these two together, um, the rate that you're going to want to use for certainty is going to be two large scoops, um, per thousand. So two, given that you have half an acre, one bottle should take care of you. That should be enough to do to take, if you, again, assuming you got, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a lawn that's the entire half acre is infested with poem, you're going to be blanket spraying it. If that's the case, then one bottle should be enough considering that you have half an acre to be able to do that with some leftover. Should be enough product. So where, what I would say is go to the Golf Force Lawn Store, go to shop, and then go to Weed Killer, and then just get, if all you care about is Poanua, just get this kit. So we have a, a certainty kit. If you go there, um, this includes certainty, uh, marker dye and surfactant. This is what you will need to clone to, to to clean up the poanua in your um in your half acre in your half acre lawn. So I will I'll give you a link here to that here in the chat, and then that will um uh, that will that, that that should put you in a good in a good spot. Um, as far as far as the rates on the label for certainty this time of year, you're gonna have to be closer to the two ounce per acre rate. So what that works out to is easier just to show you. Um, the low rate for controlling POA with this product, the low rate, which I would not recommend this time of year is one. So you have two sides of the spoon. You've got a small side and you got a large side. The large side 
one of these is the low rate for Poannua, which really this time of year is not going to work well. So the high rate, the higher rate for Poa, which this, because we're far enough in the season, you're going to probably need to do that, is two of these. So two large scoops per thousand square feet is the high rate for controlling Poannua. And that's that's likely what you're going to have to do, um, given that we're in April, for you to get rid of um, of the Poannua in your lawn. So I'll, I'll put a link in the chat here for you of where you can pick that up. Uh, I'll call it uh, Certainty Kit for Veda. I'll say Certainty Kit. I'll say Certainty Kit. Just look look here in the chat. Because you're on Facebook, you have to do it this way. Nope. I'll link it here for you. And then that that's what I would I would use. Um, and the nice thing also as well, too, is that Certainty is not just good for Poannua. If you have if you have sedges in your lawn, um, sedges, sedges, dandelions, a bunch of other weeds, it's uh, it also is labeled to control those as well, too. So it's not just for sed for Poa. It's also for sedge for controlling uh, sedges. It's actually better known for sedge control than for poannual control. So hope that helps, um, Veda. That should get you all squared away as far as getting rid of the poa in your lawn in the great state of Texas. All right. Uh, next up, once I find out where I left off, the hardest part is um, Obadiah. He says, um, Stephen has a question. He says, can I seed after I use the carbon kit? Yes, you can. Yep. No problem at all with doing that. You could, you could um, spray the carbon kit and then seed your lawn. There's no issues whatsoever. There's no, um, no weird interactions or any, any issues. You could do it either or. You could, do it, you, could, you could spray the carbon kit and then seed, or you could seed and then spray the carbon kit. That either one will work fine. It's not going not gonna to hurt anything. So good, uh, good stuff, uh, Stephen. If you need anything else, let me know. All right, uh, next up we have Obadiah uh, Camerling says, um, hey, Ron, I just got my sold test results back and it said I should put out five and a quarter pounds of a triple 12 fertilizer per thousand square feet. Oh. Problem is I couldn't find one. So I converted that to a triple 10 by stay green. Uh, yeah, that sounds, sounds should be, should work fine. As long as you, you made the adjustments in the rates should be okay. Sounds like a plan to me. Um, and let me see what else you got here. You found some other products from Lowe's and stuff. Yeah. I mean, the big thing is he says custom settings without guessing and measuring out the amount you want per thousand square feet and just walking that amount to you get the setting right. Uh, yeah. So I get what you're saying. So you're saying like, how do you ensure the spreader? How do you ensure that you are, um, when you're, you need, you're trying to apply the fertilizer at a rate higher than, um, than what's on the label. So the label doesn't have like two different rates, like what Lebanon does on their on their fertilizers. Uh, yeah, I mean, what you what you could do is um, if instead of putting it out at say, say the label rate is like three pounds per thousand and you're trying to put it out at like say four pounds per thousand. I mean, you you can just bump the, the, the spreader calibration setting up just a little bit. What I would tell you to do is if you're trying to figure out, if you're gonna stick with that fertilizer, right? To where you wanna have the calibration as close as possible, is if you can break your lawn up into thousand square foot segments and you only have to do this once until you figure out exactly what the setting needs to be. So you, if you figure out like you, like you could like warden off or, or mark off like thousand square foot areas, like a, tw a 20 by 50 foot section of the lawn. What you can do is um, let's say we're trying to apply it, let's say four pounds per thousand instead of like three pounds per thousand, which again is not, not a whole lot, not a, a big difference. Um, if you, in, you would measure out, you would weigh out four pounds of fertilizer, add that to the hopper, and then bump the rate up on the spreader just a little bit and then walk that thousand foot section and see what you end up with. If you end up with where, where, they, where the fertilizer, the four pound that's in there is all done by the time you walk the thousand square feet, then you know, hey, I'm good. Then I, I guessed right and I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. If there's still a bunch of fertilizer left, then you know you can just, you need to, you can raise it a little bit. So that without having a fertilizer, without having um, a, multiple calibrations on the bag, you have to kind of figure it out for yourself. So what I'm talking about is, I'll give you an example. Like if you look at like what Lebanon does, which is really smart on their part, um, if you look at what they do with their labels, for example, with Humic Max, or and, but any of their fertilizers that we carry, they're all the same way. Um, if you look at this, you'll see that they offer two spreader settings. Can I get this bigger? I think I can. Yeah. Um, hang on move, swipe over a little bit so you guys can actually see it. Okay. Yeah. So you see there, so there's two spreader settings. So if he says, if you want like, um, a pound half right at like nine tenths of a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet, 
with a, an Earthway, you would use this setting, right? And if you want half a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet, you would use this setting. So not most bags of fertilizer don't have multiple settings like this. So you have to kind of figure it out yourself, but Lebanon does it both ways. If you want half a pound, use this one. If you want a, you want a you know, full pound or close to a full pound, use this one. S outside of that, you kind of have to do what I said. You have to kind of figure it out yourself. And the way you can avoid overdoing it is to weigh out a specific amount of fertilizer. So don't go and fill up the entire hopper and just hope for the best. Like if, you, if you're trying to put the say four pounds per thousand over um, four pounds of fertilizer over a thousand square feet, measure out a thousand square feet, um, bump the spreader setting up just a little bit over, say your three pounds per um, thousand square feet setting and walk that 20 by 50 foot section and see how much fertilizer you have. If you, again, if you guess right, it'll all be gone. If you guess wrong and it finishes too soon, then you got to reduce it a little bit. If, if there's still some left, then you know you can you can increase it a little bit. So you have to kind of you have to figure that out. Again, it's a lot of work. Um, if you're if you're planning on if you're planning, and I would only go through that much work if you're planning on sticking with that fertilizer. Meaning that's the one you're going to be using going forward. You know what I mean? So hope that helps. Hopefully my explanation makes sense to you as far as how you would go about it. It might easy. It might be just easier if your if your soil test results say to get a triple twelve. What you might do is just you might do is this. You might just come to the golf course lawn store and just go 12, 12, 12, and just do that and just get a triple 12 fertilizer. You just buy one that actually has that because a triple 12 shouldn't be that hard to find. Triple 12 should not be that, that, that hard to find. But as far as like adjusting, um, like as far as, as taking the spreader settings of a, on, this, or on a bag of fertilizer and trying to increase that rate and knowing exactly what setting is going to produce that rate it's not, it's not, um, you have to, it's almost going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of trial and error. So hope that helps. If it were me, I would just find, just find a triple 12. It'd be, that'd be easier. Again, we carry one on the golf course launcher. Other people, if you don't want to get it from us, other people carry it too. I mean, triple 12 is pretty easy to come by. Uh, next up, uh, is, um, Brandon Henry. He says progress easy from bears. Good for, uh, Poanua, um, for Kentucky bluegrass and cool season grass, but it's expensive and it comes in a two gallon bucket. Yeah, that's, that's quite a bit. Two gallons is a whole lot more than like a pint, right? So, um, but yeah, it's another option as well too. Uh, Michael Raymond says, you just laid, I'm not sure what you're saying there, so we'll skip over that. Uh, Clayton Jefferson says, do you have cool season grass overseeded on your Bermuda? No, I do not. That is just Bermuda. What you're seeing on the back lawn and the front lawn, this is just, that is just um, Bermuda. That is, there's nothing, there's not, there's not the, the only, the only cool season grass that could potentially be in there, there's not any, but there could be in there, is Poanua. But there's no, I, my lawn is not overseeded. It's never been overseeded with any kind of cool season grass. What you're seeing is just straight Bermuda. Uh, next up is Craig Jones. He says, thanks, Ron. Um, I appreciate it. And then, Keith Martin says, in a state of depression, why? Why are you in a state of depression, Keith? Pray tell. You're very welcome, uh, Craig. You're very welcome. And then next up is Jiu-Jitsu, one, two, three, four. He says, great content, love the videos. I planted Bermuda April 2nd and it's starting to look good. How long should I wait until I put out grub um, killer and moss killer down? Can I put them at the same time normally? Um, yeah, so grub control, you can apply that. That's, that's not an issue. And then um, moss control, you should also be able to put that out to jujitsu. So to answer your question, both of those should be, you should be able to apply those now. That's not going to be a problem. Um, for the moss, though, I would I would ask why, um, like why that's a problem. Like what I would do is check, um, like consider getting a soil test done and see where your pH is. And then also if there's drainage problems in the lawn, like that can also contribute to there being issues with moss. So um, in a healthy lawn where the soil pH is where it needs to be and it's draining properly, you shouldn't have a lot of issues with moss in your lawn. So versus using like a product like Moss X regularly, I would I would try and figure out why you're having that and correct the conditions that are causing you to have moss. The grub control, um, this time of year is great to get a preventive grub control down and I would do that. Uh, Justin Ennis says, what emails do I send um, pictures to? Um, depends what you're sending the pictures for. Um, Ron at golf course lawn is my email address. I mean, if you're sending, um, images of your lawn or have, or have questions, um, you can send them there. Um, that's my, uh, oh, I think you're the one with, with your lawn at, at 0.20 inches, right? Yeah. So that's it. Ron at golf course lawn.com. If you send them, 
um, I'll try and get them on the live stream and, and check it out. Um, but again, make sure you your name is in the subject. So otherwise I won't know who it is. Because some people will be, will be like, you know, Rockstar73. And I'll be like, I have no idea who this person that just emailed me is. So make sure they say, this is Justin Ennis from the live stream. So I'll know who you are. All right. Uh, Spencer Bigham says, um, hey, Ron, I got all my products and excited to throw them down tomorrow. Thank you for all your help. You're very welcome, Spencer. And uh, next up, uh, Keith Martin says, I'm going to say the depression, the clutch of my truck just went out and I'm waiting on parts. The revolution is calling my name. Sometimes you have to just do it. <laughs> Roll tide, Ron. All right. Okay. Um, well, hopefully you get your truck fixed. Um, I mean, look at the bright side, right? At least the clutch went out at home. At least you weren't like on the road and it went out. That would be bad. That'd be worse. Could always be worse. Could always be worse. Uh, Matt, the mailman says, Oh, what do we have here? He says, Ron, when spoon feeding, do you cut the amount of liquid fertilizer in half and add to the, add the same amount of water as a full treatment? Or do you mix normally, but half as much and apply half the rate? Um, yeah, so, yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you. So for, for liquid, for what, what I aim to get on my lawn as far as nitrogen going in the lawn is around seven to eight tenths of, of a pound of nitrogen per month when the lawn is actively growing. The way I do that is um, half of the half a pound of nitrogen comes from Humic Max, from the granular fertilizer. And each application of the liquid fertilizer that I apply, so in this case, nowadays it's release 901C, uh, puts out the equivalent of a tenth of a pound of nitrogen. So I just do that every two weeks, if that makes sense. So to make this even easier for you, I've got a blog post on spoon feeding. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but literally it goes over, like it talks about, it talks about the exact rates that I use. Like if you watch, if you follow that blog post, those are the rates that I use on um, on my lawn when I'm ever out spoon feeding it with those products. So um, to answer your question, it's you, you, you apply enough, like whatever the nitrogen target that you're after, you you figure out how much of the nitrogen is gonna come from the granular fertilizer, and then how much you wanna come from the liquids, and then you just ensure that you're spraying the liquids at the rate to hit that target. If that sounds like a lot of work, it's really not that hard, but if it sounds like a lot of work, then you can just simply use like what I'm doing, which is documented with rates in this blog post. So it'll give you an idea, and if you wanna go out and modify it or try it with a different fertilizer, you can do that, but at least reading that will give you an idea of what my process is like, and then you can, again, you can do exactly what I'm doing, Humic Max, release 901C, that's what I'm spoon feeding with, or you can you can modify it as you see fit with a fertilizer of your choice. But that talks about the process and will hopefully make, will clear things up for you a bit more. All right, um, A -A Star um, 14, uh, 1141 says, um, Ron, how do you avoid ruts when mowing around edges or objects? Um, you get rid of the ruts in your lawn. So you, you do some spot leveling to, to where there's not big ruts in your lawn. That's what I would do. Because I, I vary my direction, but I still have to do a loop around outside of my trees. Should I vary distances away from the edges? Uh, yeah, so, okay, so I, I get what you're saying. Um, so there are, um, whenever I mow even the front lawn, it's a great, great point. So whenever I mow the front lawn, there is still, I still finish up with a trim pass. I'll either start with a trim pass or I'll finish up with a trim pass around the entire perimeter because, because it's a slope, you can't really easily mow right up to where the grass meets the sidewalk whenever you're mowing diagonally. And you can kind of see that if you look carefully in the video here. If you look at the bottom of the hill, you can kind of see, yeah. Perfect, you can actually see the trim pass. So you can see, you see how the, the stripes are diagonal, but then about a mower's width from the sidewalk, you see how it's just, you can tell that I made a pass that is along the contour of the sidewalk. That's how I do it. So I'll mow the entire lawn, then I'll make a trim pass around the perimeter. Because again, when you mow diagonally, you can't really, you can't, it doesn't really work well if you take the mower, you know, you can't take the mower all the way down to where the sidewalk and the grass meet. It just doesn't really work when you're coming in at an angle. So in that case, a trim pass is how I do it. Um, so that's what you would do really for any obstacles that you're mowing around. As far as ruts, um, you would, I would say just fix them, you know, like fill in, fill in the ruts with, um, with, uh, with sand, do some spot top dressing to kind of build those up to where they're not as extreme to cause scalping issues. And then for parts of the lawn where you have like, um, that are like, uh, curved, right? So like a good example is if we look at the back lawn, you can see it in the background here. I have to get a closer video of this to show you guys. But you see the back lawn, look all the way in the distance there, 
Like you see where Alex's lawn is. So if I pause it, you see where the lawn is kind of brown. Uh, where it's still kind of dormant, not fully going up yet. That, um, where the lawn kind of curves up, that little, that kind of up curve right there. Whenever I mow that part of the lawn, whenever I mow that section, um, I have to mow it, like for best, for best cut, I mow it um, parallel to the house. Meaning, meaning, I can take this off here. So let's say that this is the, this is, let's do it this way. Let's say this is the lawn, lengthwise to the house is here, this is the lawn, and it curves up, so I can do it like this, and it curves up right here. If you mow it, if you mow it, um, if you mow it along the curve, like 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 straight along the curve, you tend to get, you tend to have more issues with scalping or potential issues with scalping than if you mow it up. You know what I'm saying? So you think of it for that for just that part of the lawn, um, mow it like you're going kind of going up the half pipe. Like that tends to bet, produce a better cut than if you mow it along the half pipe. Does that make sense? I'm trying to. I'm not sure if I'm doing a great job explaining it, but if you have if you have a curved part of your lawn, and even though that curve is contoured, um, if you try and put the mower or set the mower lengthwise in that, um, the edges, each side of it, are, are gonna cut lower than the middle part of it, because it's curved, right? But if you mow up the curve, and again, we're talking about a gentle one here, that tends to produce, I find, a better cut than mowing it lengthwise. So again, I'm not probably doing a great job explaining it, but hopefully um, what I just showed in the video will make sense. Like mow it, mow it for the, for, for, if this is the curve, I can do it this way. If this is the curve, mowing it, if this is the curve, mowing it like this is gonna produce cutting problems versus mowing it like this. And we're talking about a gentle curve. Mowing up it and then down it is gonna produce a better, more even cut than mowing lengthwise. So that's something to play with as well too, if you've got that in your lawn, or for any kind of ruts or really low spots in the lawn, I would just fix them. Like I don't, like there's a, I have a whole video on spot, uh, spot leveling, spot top dressing. That is what I would do for like any dips or low spots in the lawn. If you've not seen that video, you are in luck because I will send it in the chat here for you right now. It's a really short video. It takes you all of, I think it's like less than four minutes. It's a really short video. Um, it's actually, uh, I lied. It's not even, it's not even um, uh, four minutes. It is, yeah, it's four minutes and 23 seconds. Yep, so watch this video. It talks about like spot leveling problem areas in your lawn and I think you'll get some value out of it. So check this out. A hey star, that one right there. Uh, spot leveling video. That video, that's what I would watch. Okay, uh, next up is Michael Raymond. He says, um, how is your one square foot of zoysia doing? I uh, hope you're giving it the same spoon feeding love as the Bermuda Happy Friday. I am, but it's it's behind the lawn. It's still it's still uh, lagging behind the, the, um, the, 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 the actual lawn looks better than the zoysia in the little planter does. So, which is not, not to be, um, you know, that's kind of what you would expect. I mean, zoysia tends to grow a bit slower, green up slower, just tends to be a little bit slower than Bermuda is. And next month, this time next month, that's that the little one foot square foot of Bermuda or of zoysia should look great. But right now it is behind the Bermuda. I mean, it's greening up, but not quite as quickly as the Bermuda. And it does get sprayed. I do, whenever I do, I'm spoon feeding the lawn, I do take it and put it on. I, did, I do give it one little pass. It gets the love too. I don't leave, I don't exclude it, but it is zoysia. So it's got to take its sweet time to, uh, to come along. All right, next up is Travis Smith. He says, I have centipede grass in Florida. Should I cut it as low as possible while it's not growing right now? Or is it too late in April to scalp? I just killed a bunch of weeds and I want to remove them. Yeah, so um, so what from what I've seen, Travis, I don't have a centipede lawn, but I don't hear about people scalping centipede like we do with Bermuda and zoysia. So I, I kind of recommend against that. Um, if you are, especially since the lawn isn't growing growing in as yet, um, which is kind of odd. You're in Florida. Why would your lawn Why would your lawn not be growing yet in April in Florida? I would I would have thought that it would be. Um, that would be growing in by now. I mean, if you want to cut the lawn a little bit lower, if you want to lower the height of cut, it would be okay. But if you're talking about an aggressive scalp, um, I, I don't typically hear people doing that on centipede, at least not to the level that we do with Bermuda and zoysia grass. So if you're, you're saying, I want to cut a little bit lower, that would be okay. But as far as like a drastic height of cut change, um, I would I would avoid that with um, with centipede. Like most of, again, I don't have a centipede lawn, but most of the, the guidance that I've read um, kind of points where people don't don't scalp centipede um, nearly as aggressively like we do with Bermuda and zoysia. It just doesn't like it as much. All right, next up is um, 
Golf Pro, um, H-Links Golf Pro. He says, hi, Ron. I know you're a big fan of Lebanon Turf Fertilizer products. I live right down the road from their HQ, and I have a legitimate USGA putting green and tea box in my yard. Awesome. Sounds awesome. You know what, though? While this is an awesome post, this is not as good as if we had pictures. You got to send me pictures, man. If you get a chance, even if you can't get them on the live stream this week, my email is ron at golfcourselon.com. I would love to check out your, your green. And yeah, I, I am a fan of their products. Um, you know, if you guys watch the channel for any period of time, it's not a new thing. Like, I mean, years and years and years ago, probably five, six years ago, I was using uh, their ProScape. Um, which was a great fertilizer. It's like a, it's not like the small pro like Humic Max, but it was a great fertilizer. I love the results I got with it. And then I tried some of their greens grade fertilizers and really liked that. And then the opportunity came along. Really what happened is a lot of people were used to say, you know, your, your lawn looks really great, but you know, because you have all these fancy fertilizers that we can't get our hands on. And then the opportunity came along to be able to get the same fertilizers, meaning that that excuse is gone. So you guys got the, you guys are using the exact same stuff that I'm using, like the same fertilizers I'm using in my lawn, you can now use. Um, and that's that's the you know what's what really caused the the start of the golf course lawn store because you guys can do the if you follow the video you follow the content like the same stuff I use on my lawn is what you can use on on your lawn and I like their products I mean they the the team there's they're really easy to work with um, and they're just they're quality products I like I like um, I like how, the results I get with them I mean the results the color speaks for speaks for itself so yeah I mean it's great. Great stuff. I mean, they make they make a good product. I mean, they are proud of it. They're not 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 inexpensive, but it's uh, you do get what you pay for when it comes to uh, to fertilizer when you go with Lebanon. All right, next up is Robert Marks. It says on the topic of top dressing, my Revolution Twenty Six does not come until May. I have a manual reel mower that is set to the lowest level. Should I top dress now to keep from dulling my Revolution Twenty Six that comes in three weeks? I would. Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, if you wanna, if you can get out there and cut, you know cut the lawn low with your manual push mower you've got and then go out and top dress it in three weeks. It'll likely have grown in really nicely. It'll be all set to go. You'll have a nice fresh canvas for the Revolution 26. I would, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. I don't see any reason to not do that really, Robert. You know, I, in other words, I don't know what you really gain by waiting for the Revolution to do your top dressing versus doing it now. So... Hope that helps. Um, and again, take pictures of it. You know, take pictures of how the lawn develops after all the all the hard work. All right. Next up, we have a picture. I think I think I'm gonna take a thing of that. It's because a great great question. Uh, next up, we have Marie Hornsby, um, and she is dealing with a bane. The only thing worse than Poanua. The only thing worse than Poanua in your lawn. There's only one thing worse than Poanua in your lawn. One thing, but among the few weeds that are worse than Poanio in your lawn is uh, Dallas grass. So Mario Hornsby says, uh, Dallas grass is killing me. Baking soda helps a little bit. Does anyone have any suggestions? Uh, dig it out. That's what I would tell you, Mario. And that's going to be your best, uh, your best bet. There's not really a good selective herbicide for Dallas grass that that e economically makes sense and that is and or is labeled for use on residential turf. So, um, so yeah, your best bet is just to physically remove it. Just dig, just dig it out, man. Uh, and sorry, I don't have better news for you, but it saves you a bunch of time and money. Go out and chasing, um, you know, chasing, uh, the unicorn product. Cause you can't, the product that we used to be able to use, they, you can't use it anymore in residential lawns. So there you go. Um, Timothy Wolf says, Hey Ron, your thoughts on silica sand, uh, to level. I see people using it, but isn't it toxic? I've never heard that. Um, I've never heard of silica sand being um, toxic, Timothy. So I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that one. I don't I, I don't know. I'll have to do some research. I'll have to do some digging and get back to you on that. I've not heard that silica sand is um, is toxic, but I'll have to. Um, I don't know. I'd have to I have to look into it. It's the first one for me. It's a good one. Good good question. All right, Bennett Cruz says the wow factor from a real mower is unmatched. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, they, uh, they do produce real mowers are the king of cut. If you have a short, you have, you have like short turf grass. If you got like fescue, then no, it doesn't really make sense. But if you got like a, like Bermuda, zoysia, rye grass, Kentucky bluegrass, even centipede, any, any kind of grass that like, like that will tolerate like being mowed shorter. It's really tough to beat the quality of cut that you get with a, uh, with a well set up with nice sharp real mower. So it's, it's a thing of beauty. All right, next up is Alex Ristiano. He says, I graded my yard with a skid steer last year and seeded. 
Uh, some errors are so hard from the machine weight, I can't get a screwdriver in. Ew. Can you over aerate Bermuda? Will aeration alone work <laughs> or an auger? Uh, yeah, so here's the thing, Alex. If it's that bad, you may have to, um, what you might find is the push behind core aerators, the ones you get the big box doors may not be the fit, may not be the one that will work for you. You may have to get some, bring in some heavier equipment. Like um, like you may have to find like a service that has um, like one of those write-on aerators, like one of the big like heavier duty pieces of equipment. Um, if you can find someone that has like a Procore, I think Procore is 644, like a, a Procore aerator, like that will, that will get it done. Um, because the, it sounds like if you've got that much, that heavy of compaction, like the the big box store real aerators, like the, the lighter ones just aren't gonna be enough to get it done. Something you might consider too, I'm sure you've already done this, but if you, in case you haven't, if you can water the lawn or go out there to aerate it after there's been some rainfall where the ground is a bit softer, that's gonna help improve the results you get with it. Um, and as far as over aerating it, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can you can overdo anything, but I mean, Bermuda is, Bermuda will likely recover from pretty much almost anything you can throw at it. So if, if you have like a heavy duty, your piece, heavier duty um, aerator, like a Procore or some of the other ride on this, there's one that's yellow. I don't know who makes it. I'm not sure if Hunter makes it or sorry, Hustler makes one or whatever, but I've seen people write, um, I've seen videos of people on ones that have, um, that are yellow. I'm not sure which brand that is, but I know Toro, the Toro Procore will also do it. So if you can find a service with something like that, um, that will get you in, um, will put you in a better spot and just given to the weight of the machine and just the power of it, it's going to do a better job, like really punching into the turf than what you're, what you're currently, uh, what you're currently doing. So hope that helps. Um, sorry that you're dealing with that, those kind of compaction problems, but you can absolutely get past this. You know, you just may have to just, you got to step it up, man. Step, step up the hardware, step up the kind of hardware you're using. All right, and then uh, next up we have um, Alex. He's back. He says the grass won't grow in those areas. Not even clay. It's silty, just compacted to concrete hardness. Wow. I mean, I guess you must have been over it with a skid steer a ton. I, I don't. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, you may. I, it, you know what? Send me a picture of it. I, I'd like to see this. I'd like to see a, a like ground that is so hard that you can't even get a. Um, you can't even get a uh, a screwdriver in it. Um, but again, same thing. If you can get it, you can get it soft, get some moisture in it, and then go out go out there with like a, with a heavier duty or piece of, piece of equipment, um, that should get it done. That should get it done. And he said, as a side note, the green from the Lebanon complete is love. I agree, man. It is good stuff. It is good stuff. I mean, what you're, again, what you're seeing here, while I look for the next comment, that is Humic Max and the Release 901C Carbon Kit. That's what's doing, that's what you're seeing right there. So Lebanon, if you guys, um, if you're, if you guys already know you make a great fertilizer, if any of you guys are watching in, in, you know, mid to late April, that's the kind of results you can get with it. Great, great product. And again, it doesn't even look good yet. Like, you know, check this out. Like a, a month from now is when it's really going to take off right now. It's kind of, eh. but in a month from now, beautiful, be fire. We need glasses to look at it. That's the goal, right? All right, T1000 is up next. He says, I aerated, I leveled, I top dressed and seeded two weeks ago. I also applied starter fertilizer or triple 12 in water, not once, not twice, but three times per day. Is there anything else I should do to my lawn at this point? Uh, no, you got, I mean, you got most of it done. Essential G, a bio a granular biosimilant. Outside of that, it sounds like you got, you got it all done, man. Uh, yeah, sounds like you are well on your way. You know, you know me, I, I'm a fan of granular biosimilants. If you've not done that, that I would add to what you've done there, but it sounds like you are, you've got to figure it out, man. All right. Uh, next up is James Smith. He says, I was down in, in Atlanta last week and stopped by to see Lee and Isaac. The wife got the, got the tour and got to see all the revolution 26s going through QC. After talking to both of them, the wife is on board with what we do. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing guys. And, and I, I Lee, and for then you guys that are waiting for your mowers, I know that the, there's been, there's been a few delays here and there as far as that goes. But I, I have to tell you again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't get paid by real rollers. I don't get a dime from them. I'm not affiliated with them in any way other than that. Lee's, I, I, I consider Lee and Isaac to be friends. That's, that's about the extent of it. But I can tell you that if there's any delays, it's literally because they are, they are working to, to make these mowers as perfect as possible when they go out the door. Some of you guys that are in the, in the group know about some of the small things they've been, they've been adjusting or addressing. Um, and they just want to make sure that when you get the mower, literally you take it out of the box, put it together and you get out there and have a great, great time using it. So just know that, that it's, it's not that they are, don't, don't want to ship the mowers. They are literally, 
Um, they, they are every mower that goes out is touched by one or, bo- or by multiple people before it's shipped to you. Every single one of them. If any of you guys picked up, I'm mean, nothing that means anything, but if any of you guys picked up a mower locally, you may even have a mower that I built. So if it stinks, I guess blame me. So the, the, the mowers that were, that were picked up in Atlanta or picked up for local pickup, like the first, whatever it is, 80 or whatever, um, you know, those, those were built, those were built over that, that, that weekend um, period of time. So if you got one of the, one of the newer ones, you may have like a, a mower that, that I actually touched for whatever little that may, that might mean to you. All right, next up is Justin Williams. He says, uh, would you, let's see here. Um, would you recommend getting a pistol grip for a backpack sprayer? If so, what brand works for most backpack sprayers? Um, I I don't know. I mean, are you talking about like the grip that's on like the like the the, the sprayer that we carry on the golf course lawn store and the flow zones? Um, yeah, I mean, they, they work, but it's, I mean, I, I can't recommend a brand of pistol grips. I've never swapped one. I've never taken a, sp- a sprayer that didn't have one and swapped one of those in. So I can't, I can't really recommend one, unfortunately, uh, Justin. As far as what I recommend one, if you prefer pistol grips, sure. But I mean, I don't, I don't think they inherently are. Um, I mean, they might be a bit better built and will hold up longer. But as far as if the 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 the, the, the grip that you have to activate the sprayer isn't leaking. They both do the same thing. Like it's a really basic valve that lets the let the product you know lets let the product flow through the um, the wand and the spray tip. So if it's if what you got is working, I don't think you're necessarily going to get like a better result by going to a pistol grip. But if you just prefer that 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 style, then uh, then sure. But I can't recommend one because I don't know. I've never actually swapped grips on a sprayer before. So uh, sorry, I'm not more helpful help on that one. All right. Uh, next up is. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, Vishal says, as a new viewer to your channel, uh, I absolutely loving the content and learning so much. Uh, to take care of the lawn, do you have a walk-in store in Flower Branch? Would love to visit. No, not really. We don't. We don't do. We don't do walk-ins um, primarily because like the products ship from all from different warehouses that are all over the place. Um, so if you're looking to, to get products, then that's that's not really an efficient play. Not efficient way to do it. We have we do have like a local warehouse around here that carries a lot of that houses. Um, some of the herbicides and the fungicides and insecticides, but really we're, it's, this, this, this business is set up as an e-commerce store. So it's just, it's just easier just to, sh- to ship the stuff um, directly to you. If you're in Georgia for a lot of the products, if you order like Humic Max or, um, or the Complete or the 12024, um, for most plate, most places in Georgia in the Atlanta area anyway, it's overnight. So if you shipped it, if you ordered Monday um, and it shipped Tuesday, you would have it Wednesday. So that, or if you, for example, if you ordered this weekend, it would ship Monday. And if you're in Georgia, you're going to have it Tuesday. So it's like literally like next day shipping, overnight shipping. So it's, it's actually less headache, honestly, just to order it online than just to go pick it up. And you can't pick it up anyway, because it's all in a warehouse and just logistically, it's, it's an, it'd be a nightmare. So uh, unfortunately we don't, Michelle, but it, whenever we, whenever Real Rollers has the, um, the turf park party, which I believe they're going to have one next month, if you want to do a meet and greet, um, I will be there. So you, if you want to come and hang out and, and say hi, I will, um, happy to, happy to meet you. I can promise you I'm a lot cooler on the internet than I am in person in real life. But, uh, but yeah, if you want to come, come to the turf park party, once real rollers announces it, um, I will likely be there and, you know, happy to say hi and put a name with the face. If you want to stop by next up is Timothy Smith. Uh, let's see here. He says, hi, Ron and lawn caring people. Okay. I've never heard this referred to that way, but We'll take it. He says, I've been on just quiet. The lawn is Bermuda in Georgia cut at five eighths with a true cut. I sent some pics. Very cool. Timothy, is your name Timothy Smith and what you sent to me? Because I don't see anything yet, Timothy. I may have to, I may have to look here. I don't, I don't see, um, I don't see anything as, I don't see anything as yet from you. If you emailed me. Oh, actually, there we go. Yeah. Tim Smith. There it is. Um, Ooh, man. Okay. 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 Okay, Tim. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me get get these in here. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay. You are, you're getting it done. I like this. I like what I'm seeing here. Again, another, another sloped lawn, another, you know, you, you feel, you feel my pain. You know what it's like to live on that slope life. And, uh, let's get you, uh, let's get you up here, man. Let's show, let's show the fruits of all your hard work. 
I got all these pictures to show. All right, so this is Timothy's sloped front lawn. This is picture Uno. And that's that that slope has got to be, I don't know, it might not be as steep as mine, but that's, that's nothing to play with, Timothy. That looks good, man. Picture one, and then the obligatory picture two, you know, with the angle showing off the stripe action. Now, and as, as you've seen, the people that have asked earlier about mowing a slope, you can see that Timothy is on that diagonal mow life. You can see he's mowing it diagonally. He's not mowing straight up the slope, so great work there. That is excellent form. I like it. And then finally, the shot across the street, the domination shot. We'll just call this a domination shot. So you look at his lawn. I mean, that color is awesome. The vanity strip is on point, and you can see the neighbor. The neighbor next to you is, is trying to is trying to, to catch up, but then the guys guys and gals across the street are definitely lagging behind. So you are leading the charge. You're setting the standard. I like it. I like it. Well done, sir. Well done. You know we're gonna clap that up. That looks that looks uh, looks really good. Fire. Very cool. Yeah, man. So, uh, so keep it going. And ooh, we have a picture here from, I think, Justin. He says he's one of mowing at 0 0.20. The golf green. Um, oh, that's that's cool too, man. All right. Hang on, guys. Um, story time. Let's get uh, Justin's lawn. So it looks like he actually is. He actually did put in what appears to be a green. He shows his whole process here. So we'll, we will we'll res we'll respect that. Put some respect on his name and show uh, show the fruits of all his labor. Make sure I can show these in the right order. So picture one, so it's one, two, and then three. Okay, so this is how it started. It's how it started out. This is what he's working with, which again, you know, you can tell, did some leveling work there, not, it's a good start to the uh, to the program. And then followed up with, uh, with this, looking good. And then the piece, the piece de resistance, the nice, the, the finished product is going to be that. It looks good, pretty good, man. I can tell you, the color looks looks fire. It is um, it is sweet, nicely done. So, so the thing the thing about this is interesting. You look at your lawn. Your neighbors are like rocks for a lawn, right? They're just using like looks like stone lawns or concrete lawns. You're the man out there. You're that guy. You're like you're like the Robert Rainey of your neighborhood, where you got like you got like a, a strip of grass there, and it looks good. You know, small area. But that little piece of grass is looking looking on point. So I like it. Very nice work, sir. Uh, it looks great. Car looks great. Lawn looks great. Nice work. Very, very nice work. All right. And then you said, uh, Timothy says, I think it's time for the Revolution 26 to cut some better stripes. Yeah, you'll definitely get better stripes with that, with the uh, with the with the real mower than you are with looks like a rotary mower that you are using that you're using now. So it's going to be a whole different whole different level. One thing you may you may have to do Timothy is level. Like, you know, that that will likely be in the cards at some point, but um but yeah, it's going to be a whole different level of awesome once you get that real mower. Uh Andre uh Taylor says, "I have some leftover 12024 and 1608. Can I apply them both on the same day or should I just stick to specific one whenever applying?" I would do one or the other, um Andre. Reason being is like if, if you are following what I recommend, which is around half a pound of nitrogen per um, per month, um, then you can get that easily from either one of those. I would just do, if, if you have enough to do, to, to, to finish the lawn off with um, so the 12 24, then just feed the lawn with that this month and then you can move over to Humic Max. That would be fine, but I wouldn't do both of them. That's uh, That would be overdoing it in my opinion. I would do one or the other. I would not do both. Uh, Rick uh, Rothwell says, I live in Michigan. What would be a good wetting agent? Um, what I would recommend is Hydrotain, Rick. Hydrotain is a good um, is a good option. It comes, it's available in both a granular and, uh, and liquid. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If you go over to the golf course lawn store and then you go to shop and then soil moisture management, you will see Hydrotain, which you have, um, you've got it again, a granular option. You've got it as a liquid in a, um, in a hose end sprayer. And then we've also got uh, foreplay, which is um, hydrotain, seaweed. Um, so it's got hydro, it's four things. And I forget what the other, what the other four are. I'm sitting there trying to figure, trying to remember. So it's, um, yeah, there you go. So it's, uh, it's seaweed extract, surfactant, potassium, humate, and then also hydrotain. So it's four different products all in one. 
Um, and it's available again as a hose end sprayer or you can get it as, as a gallon. The trick is this, right? If you're gonna be applying it with a the hose end sprayer, like buy this and then whenever you need it, whenever you need more, just buy the gallon and refill this. And you can use this to apply it. You can use this as your applicator and just use the gallon just to refill the, the quart and that way you're always you're always good to go. And the same thing is true for, for hydrotain. So I will get you a link to where you can pick those up. Um, Rick here in the chat at Rick. Uh, Rothwell, and I'll say moisture managers. Uh, there you go. All right. Uh, next up is Bashal. He is back. He says, another question. Can you apply Primo Max, liquid fertilizer, liquid nitrogen fertilizer, and iron at the same time, or is that not necessary? Sorry, I'm still learning and trying to figure it out. Not only can you apply them at the same time, I recommend doing so. So I, I can't think, I'm trying to think here. I can't think of, I can, I'll put it this way. Over the entire years that I've been spraying growth regulator, less than a handful of times have I ever sprayed Primo or, or any kind of growth regulator just by itself. I've always mixed it with uh, a liquid fertilizer um, and uh, and or a nitro or an iron product. So what I do whenever I spray uh, Primo Max, um, Bishal, I'll show you really quick here, is I I mix the carbon kit. Um, I use a liquid fertilizer, which is which has a liquid fertilizer in it. And I also use a micronutrient. So it checks all those boxes you're talking about. So Primo, the 901C carbon kit, and then for iron, Nutrizolve. So this, this, and this, I'll go in the tank at the same time. Um, so I've got a, a blog post that explains it, but if you're gonna, next question you're probably gonna ask me is what rates do you use? Well, I'm glad you asked. So I'll tell you. So if you're spraying, if you're spraying 4,000 square feet of, of, um, of turf grass, right? And you're gonna do it exactly what I do. So next weekend, I'll be doing this. So um, what you're gonna start out with, for Bermuda grass anyway, is you're gonna mix half an ounce, so a little bit more than that, like so half an ounce of Primo Max in four gallons of water. That's enough to cover 4,000 square feet. And then you're gonna take um, of the carbon kit, the 901C carbon kit, which contains, um, three different products. And we'll go back here and we'll, we'll, I'll show you while I'm doing it. So for Primo, we've already covered this. Um, half an ounce of Primo Max, half an ounce, 0.5 ounces in four gallons of water over 4,000 square feet. So that covers you for Primo. When it comes to the 901C carbon kit, you're gonna mix um, three ounces of release 901C in, or actually, I'm sorry, that's per thousand. So a total of 12 ounces of release 901C in, in four gallons of water. 12 ounces of NutriKelp in four gallons of water, and then one tablespoon of bio, or one of these capsules, if you have the capsules, they'd be fine, but, if you're, but I, I have like the, the bag of biospectrum. If you have the bag of biospectrum, one tablespoon. If you have the capsule, a capsule in four gallons of water. So again, to recap, as far as your mixing so far is for Primo, assuming you have a Bermuda or Zoysia lawn, half an ounce, so 0.5 ounces in four gallons of water, when it comes to the liquids in the carbon kit, it's gonna be three times four. So four, or so 12 ounces of release 901C, 12 ounces of NutriKelp, and then one tablespoon of the biospectrum. And then for um, the Nutrizolve, which is your liquid micronutrient, it's six ounces per thousand. So in this one, well, this one is the, the, the most amount of liquid you're actually adding. You're gonna be spraying, um, adding 12, oh, sorry, 24 ounces of Nutrizolve in um, four gallons of water. All right, so that is that is the stack. That is literally what I spray on my lawn. Like, but that's what got the front lawn sprayed with in next weekend. That's what I'm gonna be spraying. So one more time, one more again. Half an ounce of Primo in four gallons of water. Twelve ounces of Release 901C in four gallons of water. Twelve ounces of NutriKelp in four gallons of water, and then twenty-four ounces of Nutrizolve in four gallons of water, and then either one of the pills, the one of the biospectrum pills, or if you've got, um, if you've got uh, this, if you've got this, just one tablespoon, one, uh, one level uh, tablespoon of, um, of, of biospectrum in that four gallon of water. So that's so that whole mix of Primo, Release 901C, NutriKelp, Biospectrum, and Nutrizolve. Um, which is kind of what you're talking about, the growth regulator, nitrogen fertilizer, and, and micronutrient, and with iron, that's gonna cover 4,000 square feet. So if you are, um, so that's, 
that's that's what I do. So hopefully that helps. If you got a 4,000 square foot lawn, that's what, that's how you would mix it. If you're doing what I do, um, if you got a bigger than 4,000 square foot lawn, just keep, just multiply that. So 8,000 square feet, do that twice. So hope that helps, sir. Any other questions, uh, let me know. Um, and I've got a blog post on Growth Regulator that talks in more detail about about this, about that the, that process. Well, I shall link to you here in the chat if I can find it here really quick. So I'll link this in the chat for you on the blog post on Growth Regulator. It's it's really short, and if you um you read that, you will uh, you'll 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 have even more even more info. But pretty much what I just described to you is exactly what you would be. Um, exactly what you'd be doing. So, vi oh, vi I keep calling you Vishnal, it's Vishal. So, why you didn't correct me, man? Why don't you say, hey, man, you say my name wrong? Why don't you, why don't you, tell, why don't you keep, let me keep doing that? All right, Jack Wright is up next. He says, uh, Ron, thoughts on iteration to relieve disease pressure in warm season lawns by opening it up to oxygen and allowing it to dry out a bit faster? You think it might help? Then coration or spike? Uh, yeah, it, it definitely can't hurt. Um, Jack, if you have a lawn, a soil that's waterlogged using core aeration, um, yeah, as far as getting air, um, air in, in addition to air and moisture into the soil is, um, those are all benefits of doing it. Also managing thatch levels in the lawn is also going to help you also going to help reduce disease pressure. So again, I've said this before, but whenever I started regularly turf raking the lawn over the years, like I have far less problems with the disease in the lawn than I did years prior to that. So that's another benefit of, um, of that process. But yeah, coordination is not gonna, is, is definitely not gonna hurt as, it, as far as it goes with, um, with relieving disease pressure. Um, when you do core aerate, um, if you had an area of your lawn that had a disease problem, um, I would do that last. I would aerate that area last. So if you, you know, most of your lawn is fine, and you had one section where you had some large patch or something else going on, aerate that portion of the lawn last is what I would, only other piece of advice I would I would give you. All right, uh, Timothy Smith is up uh, next. He says, by the way, the pics I sent are from yesterday and my lawn has been greening er since early March. Years of leveling, verticutting, Carbon Pro G are just, uh, and plus a good fertilizer program. Everything you say, yep, it's just, it's a process. You just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again for a number of years and you you tend to produce a better result than people that don't do that. So, so there you go. Um, okay, Adam, I did look at your pictures and gave you some feedback. And then next up is C. Hill. He says, greetings and salutations, Ron. I need some advice. Um, what would be the best way to stop my next door neighbor from cutting over the property line? Just ask them to, ask them to stop doing that. It's probably the best way. I mean, I can't, I can't think of, I can't think of another way other than putting like a border up and being like putting a fence up. That would do it. But outside of that, all you can do is say, hey, please, would you mind? Just please don't cut on my part of the grass, please. And they, I imagine if they're reasonable, they would they would listen to you. I can't see why that would be a problem. Or if they're going to do it, say, hey, can you cut it this way? You know, so yeah, I would just ask them. That, that's really going to be your, your best bet. I can't think of anything else that um, is not going to be invasive or kind of a headache and create more work for you versus just asking them. All right, next up is Clayton uh, Jefferson. He says, anyone else here cut coolsies and grass short? I sent you a picture of mine at three quarters of an inch, Ron. Did you now? Uh, Clayton Jefferson, do I have a picture of you, anything from you? I don't see anything. I don't see anything from you, uh, Clayton. Um, I'll look here really quick. Um, Clayton Jefferson, did you send me a picture? Uh, yeah, you did send me a picture. That's cool. Is grass? What kind of, oh, it's rye grass. You said, okay. Yeah. Let me, um, I can show folks. I can show folks what you're working with. Um, let's get this moved over. We can do a little show and tell. If this will load, I'm going to have to start having folks, if you want to send pictures, like submit them before the show, because it's, um, it's, uh, not that it's hard to do it live, but some of you guys send me pictures where they're like in portrait <laughs> instead of landscape. And I have to sit here and fix the orientation before I put it on the camera on the, on the live stream. All right. So yeah, and this is not, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, um, I think this is going to work, Justin. Yeah, so I can, uh, yeah, there we go. I think that works. All right, um, so check it out. So this is what he is working with, his ryegrass lawn. And yeah, cut short. What do you say you're mowing at? Three quarters of an inch. Very cool. Very cool. Looking good, man. Stripe action's on point. Color looks pretty good. And it's three quarters of an inch. Nice work. Looking good. 
All right, next up is LTX Shep. Uh, he says, I just sent over pictures. I need to figure out what weed's in the picture. Thanks. I'll take a look, um, Shep, after the show, if you're okay with that. Um, uh, so let me, yeah, let me let me take a peek once the show's over. I promise I will answer your answer your question tonight uh, once I get a chance to um, to look over them. Um, but, um, but, you know, actually, you know, I might be able to do it now. Let me see if I can just find the picture really quickly. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, wow. I know exactly what that is. That is Poanua. It's like annual bluegrass. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is what Shep is dealing with in his lawn. Saves me, it saves me an email because Lord knows I get enough email. So uh, let me get this set up here to where I can actually show you. So yeah, the weed you're talking about and that you're seeing in your lawn is um, is annual bluegrass. So that's picture one, and he sent a close up of it. And this is picture, uh, same thing, picture one. But you, I think you sent me a close up. Uh, yeah, but it's, that's that's a that's Poa, that's Poa um, Shep. That's what that's what you're that's what you are that's what you're dealing with. So your close up picture is right here, and we'll show the gallery that. And there you go. Yeah. So see, so you see the white seed heads, or the flower heads. That is uh, it's telltale signs of Poanua. So that's what you're dealing with. So, um, so yeah, I hope that helps. I didn't see the rest of your email. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. But, um, but yeah, Poa is what you uh, what you got. So if you got cool, I don't know what kind of grass you have. I didn't, I didn't look at the rest of it. But if you have a warm season lawn, certainty will take care of it. And if you have um, cool season turf grass, your choices are either live with it or um, velocity or velocity but, but again this one bottle is like seven acres so i mean it's not going to be inexpensive but you likely won't need any for a very long time all right next up we have uh da, 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 next up we have terrence stamps he says uh this is uh ron do you have a video in your library of where you use plugs in the lawn i don't i don't i've never really had to plug my lawn i, I wish i had many years ago um, but I, I, that's something I've ever had to do on my lawn. Um, I guess it's something I can do just to show you guys how the process would work, but I don't have that. That's one thing I do not have in my library, Terrence. I do not. You know, check out uh, Lawn Tools. If you're looking at Lawn Tools content, um, they do that like all the time. They've got tons of content on that. Um, so if you check out their channel, you will see video a video or content of um, of plugging a, um, using transferring plugs in a lawn. All right, next up is, um, is, is Timothy Gonzalez. He says, hello, Ron from New Mexico. Celsius was surfactant, it took some time, but it worked on killing the fescue. Thanks for keeping me from glyphosate. You're very welcome. Glad to hear that. So you had, so Timothy had so a Bermuda lawn with some fescue in it. You wanted to get rid of the fescue selectively, use Celsius, and it knocked it out. He's also, I'm trying to get the Bermuda to spread. Well, just putting down end work, or should I rub up the soil with a garden weasel first? Uh, so, if you want Bermuda to, to grow laterally, Timothy, yes, feeding it is important, but also regular mowing at, at lower cutting heights is going to encourage it to spread. So just feeding it with nitrogen by itself, I mean, it's going to, I mean, Bermuda spreads naturally, but if you're really trying to really encourage it to grow laterally, um, mowing at mowing regularly at lower cutting heights is really going to going to accelerate that process along with a, a, a proper nutrient program. But I want to make let you know that it's not like just throw out nitrogen and just wait. Like make sure you're mowing it. And again, shorter is uh, better if you're trying to get it to spread. Um, let's see here. Um, next up is um, as Justin Judkins. He says I want to get some Pillar SC. But the Revolution 26, I might be limited to just some old propiconazole. What are the differences I can expect to see between the two? So um, propiconazole is just, I mean, that's a single, um, it's a single fungicide, whereas Pillar SC is, um, there are two fungicides in it. Now, um, I think it's a group three and 11. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's correct. So Pillar SC is kind of like headway in the sense that it's a two, it's a dual action product. It has two fungicides in the bottle. Whereas propiconazole just by itself is just a single fungicide. So as far as control, you can expect better control with Pillar SC. Um, but if you're, you know, if, if propiconazole is all you can you, you can afford right now, or if that's what you got, you know, go with what you got. It's better than not doing anything. Um, but what I would expect to see is better control with Pillar because again, you're dealing with two fungicides instead of just one in the bottle. All right, Oliver is up next. He says, question about double cutting. Uh, do you double cut in the same direction you mow 
that session or do you cut perpendicular? I will, if I'm double cutting, I will, I will cut perpendicular. So if I'm, if I'm double cutting the back lawn, I will literally cut, um, I'll cut like how you see the stripes now. And then for the second pass, I will cut lengthwise. I will cut parallel to the house. So I don't, I, if you're asking if I go over the same stripes twice, no, I will cut like, you know, perpendicular to the house. And then I will cut parallel to the house. I'll vary it because that produces a better cut. Like that's gonna produce a better cut than cutting over the same, like in other words, cutting twice perpendicularly is not gonna be as, produce as good a cut as if you cut um, perpendicular and then cut parallel to the house. It's, that's gonna, it's gonna be better. Because you're, you're cutting, you're rolling the grass and cutting it, you're hitting it from different angles. It's, it's just gonna produce a better, a better cut overall than going over the same way twice. All right, next up is Brian Hall, he says, um, Hey again, Ron, I have a Toro self-cleaning mower. Should I use a cleaning solution to clean out the blades after I cut my lawn so disease will not spread? Um, I don't, I'm not sure what a self-cleaning mower does, but if you have disease in your lawn, then yes, I would not rely on whatever the self-cleaning function of the mower is. I would I would lift the deck and rinse rinse it out. Um, you know, if you need to use a bit of, um, yeah, if you, yes, I would clean it yourself, in other words. I would not rely on whatever the self-cleaning function is, because I'm not sure how well that really would work. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would I would rinse it. If you got a disease problem, absolutely rinse off your mower um, before putting it up and using it again. All right, Tillman Walters is up uh, next. He says, Ron, if you have a thousand square foot of grass that contains Bermuda grass but has sedges, usually one spray is not enough. How often can you spray and when? Um, so if you've got sedges, depends on what you're spraying with, Tillman. Like I find with certainty one application does a pretty good job. Like I don't normally have to go back again. So one application of certainty for me does a pretty good job cleaning up sedges in my Bermuda grass lawn. If you need to go back again, I would give it at least three weeks from the time you, you sprayed before you, you spray again. But again, if you're spraying certainty at the right rates and you're using surfactant with it, you should be in pretty good shape. You should not have to go back. Um, it, shouldn't, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't take multiple rounds of this to, to, to clean up sedges. Sedges are pretty easy to knock out if you're using certainty. POA, Maybe more than one app, but sedges typically aren't a problem um, with that um, with that product. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, kind of burn through these really quickly because we're getting towards the end. Um, Clint says, uh, da, 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 da. Um, Clint's up next. He says, what rate of of ammoniacal uh, sulfate should it can uh, should be added to the carbon kit with surfactant without burning. First run down went down this week, and the first mow with the Rolex twenty five. Yeah, I whatever the label calls for, Clint is what I would say. So you adding it to the carbon kit, um, assuming you're using like if the the um, the AMS ammoniacal the ammoniacal sulfate you're using, um, if it has, um, if you're mixing that with the with the release zero carbon kit, I wouldn't really be concerned about burning because there's no, there's not a whole lot of nitrogen that's being added along with that. If you're using the release 901C carbon kit, um, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd have to, whatever the rates are on the, for that product, I would stick to that. Um, and if you're going to mix it with the carbon kit, I would use the release zero instead of release 901C. That is what I would do if you're gonna if you're worried about potentially overdoing it and burning the lawn. Uh, Jay Pick says, "What can you do about rock hard clay? Uh, aerate it. Aeration is what I would say. Like um, hollow tine aeration is is a great way to relieve compaction in a um, a clay soil. Like water it and then aerate it. You may have to again, like I told the other viewer earlier, you may have to call in a service if it's um, if it's really compacted because the ones the aerators you rent from." The big box stores may not be heavy enough to be able to do to do the job. Uh, Alan Coleman Jr. says, do you have a recommendation on a verticutter for those who don't have a cartridge system? Uh, you could use, again, the Sun Joe, um, those, there's a, those can be set up to do verticutting. There's people, there's folks in the Golf Course Lawn Academy that have Sun Joes and use those to both turf rake and verticut. So you just got to make sure that you set the depth properly to where you're not being too aggressive, but you can verticut with that um, with that system, and it's not not terribly expensive. Like that is um, the way I would go if you don't have like a cartridge um, system mower. All right, next up is James uh, Smith. Which mower do you use to cut the one square foot of zoysia? 
Um, hope not the greens master. I use scissors, a pair of scissors. That's what I go with. That is what I, um, that is what I go with. Um, and then next up, um, next up it says, what is it? Adam Carter says, Ron, if I spoon feed with 1801 and use a granular fertilizer and really low on N and potassium, uh, should I use 1608 or 12024? Either one of those can work well, Adam. It really just depends. Like whatever product you're using on the label, it should tell you this many ounces per thousand will, uh, will apply this much nitrogen. So whatever those rates are, if you're doing spoon feeding, like how I recommend it, um, then you're going to want, you're going to aim for like around a, around a 10th of a pound of nitrogen from the liquid product. Um, and whatever rate that happens to be, I mean, the label should tell you that that is what you would spray every, every a couple of weeks. That's what I would, um, that's what I would do. Okay. Funny foot long, <laughs> um, says, uh, I had a, a little boy yell at his dad. He says, daddy, this grass looks so good. When they walk by the house last night, Brought a tear to my eye. That is the best, isn't it? You gotta love it when folks recognize all the hard work that you put into um, put into your lawn. And then uh, next up we have here, Funny Foot Long says, glyphosate in a paintbrush is Dallas grass's worst nightmare. Yeah, I mean, you can you can go that route too. It's just a lot of work in it. And I don't know that it really will, will truly get rid of it long-term. Like digging it out will over time get rid of it. But just, um, but yeah, it's just your, your, uh, your call as far as which way you wanna go. All right, next up we are winding down. I got I already I think I already got your pictures of the putting green. So I don't think I have any any more. So yeah, thanks for, I think I already showed those. Um and then next up we have uh, Ian Michal. He says, "Ron, my zoysia is just starting to wake up here in New England. Should I scalp it now or wait for a little growth? I'm not sure my mower can get low enough to scalp at its current height." Oh. Have you scalped it in the past? I mean, if you if you want to scalp your zoysia, yes, you can. There's not there's no problem with doing that. Like, I mean, I know like the folks at River Rovers have already done theirs, they've already scalped their lawn, they've already scalped their zoysia plots. Um, and if you want to scalp it now, you you can. Just remember that zoysia is grows quite a bit slower than Bermuda does. So if you scalp it, the time to recover is gonna be is gonna be a little bit slower. But I still think there's a lot of benefit to um to a scalp at the beginning of the season, Ian. So yeah, if, you're waking, if your lawn's waking up, it's starting to grow, and if you want to scalp it, then yes, by all means, go for it. And just just use whatever you got. Like if, you, if you're a mower, if you're using a rotary, and you're normally mowing the lawn, your zoysia on say notch two, scalping for you might mean bringing the mower down to like notch one and doing a cut there, and then that's where you leave it. You know, scalping doesn't have to be super low. You know, it just, it really depends on like where you intend to maintain the lawn. Uh, Gary Freeman says, hey, Ron, I know that I just talked about filling in dips, um, but someone just drove across my lawn and left a, mm, mm, left a 12 foot tire mark about one and a half inches deep, but the grass is still growing in the rut. Yeah, that's that's pretty savage. You can still fill it in. Just you can top dress and fix that. You can build that up. Um, you know, Gary, that's that's pretty horrible. That is not cool. Not cool. Not cool that someone would do that. Sorry that you're dealing with that. Uh, let's see here. Jonathan Peeble a pool says, "Hey Ron, would you consider the Revolution 26 an upgrade over a John Deere uh, 220B? I have a slope to my lawn. I haven't had any run any issues yet, but have only been using it um, once for about a month. Uh, no, not really. So I, I would still say that a greens mower, like um, a Toro Greens Master or a John Deere, are are going to produce a superior cut than what you will find out of um, even like the Revolution." Um, but there's not a lot of difference. There's not a whole lot in it. You know what I mean? So in other words, if you had, in other words, if you're looking for another mower, if you're looking for like a backup mower or just have, just have another mower whenever like your John Deere's down getting work done to it, the Revolution 26, you would not be unhappy with how that mower cuts. I will tell you that um, as far as on the front lawn, it is a, it's a smaller mower, even though the cutting width is, is about as wide as my, um, my Greens Master. It is a smaller, like smaller mower. It's a, it's lighter, so it's easier to use. So that's something you're gonna notice. If you went from like the John Deere to that, or if you added that, you know, revolution to the stables as well, it's a lighter mower, so it's easier to, to manipulate and just just move around on the lawn. So that's that's kind of a bonus. Um, but as far as cut quality, man, it's it's. I mean, you got like Toro and John Deere, are like the kings of cut. You can't really. It's really tough to say. Um, 
that, you know, to, to really to do a whole lot better than those. The revolution gets really close, though. Like, I, I'll tell you, like, if you had to compare the, be the best way I can describe that mower, especially the version that's being shipped now, is if the Greensmaster and a True Cut had a baby, that's what the Revolution 26 is. Again, it, look, if, if you want to you look at the, the back lawn, look at my back lawn. Like, if I told you that that was cut with the Owlet, or cut with the greens master you'd be like yeah that looks really good you would not take anything away from that but that all this week the only mower that's been on the back lawn has been the revolution 26 so it's a it mower cuts really good man it's not you know it's not there's not a um there's not a whole lot in it so um but what i say that it's um i don't know it's, it's in other words if you have a if you have a john deere a 220 I don't know that I would move away from it unless you just don't like the mower. Because the one thing that you that you don't really appreciate when you're using a Greens Master compared to the Revolution is how much easier the Revolution is to use. It's, it's a lighter mower, cuts great, easier to manipulate, easier to move around. It's just everything about the mower is just easier. Um, so if you if you find the John Deere to be overwhelming or it's just too heavy or whatever it is, then that could make a compelling case for the for the revolution. Um, but as far as like just pure cut quality, uh, I, I still would have to put like a JD or or a Greens Master um, up there. You know what I mean? But again, you, you're, you're talking about completely different um, levels of of cost. Like a, a brand new Greens Master. When I when I called Jerry Pate, you know two years ago and, and try to price out a brand new greens master. It was like 16 grand. You know, the revolution is like three, that is like under 3000. So it, to, does a, does a greens master cut better? Does an 11 blade greens master at three quarters of an inch cut better than the revolution 26 at three quarters of an inch? You're splitting hairs, but arguably, yes. I mean, if you, if you were looking at both of them and you look out down and look at the turf, you would see the greens master produces a better cut. Is it five times better? Not even close. Not not even remote. It's not it's not remotely close to five times better. But is it better? Arguably, yes. But it's not. You're really splitting hairs. You know what I mean? So it's up to you. I, I gave you. How's that for a non-answer answer? It's uh, if you wanted a second mower that rivals the cut quality of your John Deere, the Revolution Twenty Six would be an excellent choice. That's probably the best way I, I, I can say it. All right. Next up is James Smith. He says, getting towards the end. <laughs> Uh, let's get those likes in for Ron. We all know he sleeps better with the not higher numbers. He needs the rest for all the weekend work. That's right, man. This weekend really won't be too busy. This weekend is just a mo. Next weekend is like spraying, and I got to get out there and I got the backpack sprayer and mow the lawn and just, you know how it is. Labor of love. And then let's see. Next up is Mr. Mr. McNasty says, uh, Ron, great show as always. I really appreciate that. Mr. McNasty Motorsports. And the next up is Bruise Crew says, when should I start uh, PGR? Depends on how your lawn looks. You could start it now. Like this weekend, when I go out and I spray the lawn, like everything's going to get growth regulator. So if your lawn looks like how my back lawn is looking, then I would say, yeah, go for it. You're good to go. You know, introduce, introduce growth regulator, introduce Primo. Even if it was not quite where that one, where my back lawn is yet, you can introduce Primo. Um, if it's where my front lawn is, absolutely. Like the the front lawn was get got primo uh, last month. I, I introduced it earlier just to play with it, um, and I like the results. I really do like the results. All right. Uh, next up is um, Adam Carter says, Ron, are you getting your top dress mix from Super Sod this year? I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to top dress it, which, or if I'm just going to have a service do it. I know it's kind of a cop out, but it's a lot of work to top dress 12,000 square feet. And I don't know if, if, I mean, Alex will probably break up with me if I try and ask him to help out with top dressing. We're like, we're buddies. We get along pretty well. But I mean, you understand, man, like top dressing a large property can can put stress on a friendship, man. It really can. So I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't decided yet which way I'm going to go as yet. He keeps telling me that I don't even need to do it. And I, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to believe him. He looked at the lawn the other day. He's like, dude, why are you even top dressing this thing? It doesn't, it looks, it looks fine. Like, what are you hoping to gain by top dressing that? It doesn't really need, need it. And I, I, I kind of agree. It looks, it looks really good. Uh, so we'll see. I haven't decided yet, Adam. Um, but Jonathan, um, pool says, um, yes, it being lighter and having the independent drive and real may made me think it might be easier going uh, downhill. Yes. So that's one, that's one good point, Jonathan. Yeah. So the independent having the drive system and the real decoupled is a you don't realize how nice that feature is because none of my other mowers 
really have that in a way that's usable. Like the greens master, you can't do it. Like literally, the mower, the reel's not turning unless the mower is um, is um, going forward. You can't like have the reel, the, the reel just freewheeling. And the outlet, while you technically could run just the reel, the mower is like 300 pounds. So you're not pushing that without propulsion. So really the, the um, revolution is light enough that you can actually treat it like a push mower with the reel turning that I can't do with any of the mowers I own. And I know some people have already commented on YouTube saying, hey, my Kensington can do that. I'm like, yes, I know, I know other mowers can do it. I'm talking about like mowers that I own. It's the only one that mower that I own that can currently do that. My true cut could also do it, but my true cut's broken. So it's currently the only mower that I have that can do it. And the true cut and the revolution, they are worlds apart. Like if you ever are asking a question, like a better question for you guys to ask is instead of asking revolution or John Deere or revolution and Greensmaster, if you're asking revolution and true cut, it is, that's an easy one. Like, you know, 10 times for the revolution and 40 times on Sundays, like not even close, not even, there's like no universe where if you were, if I were in the market for a new mower now in the $3,000 price range that I would be looking at a true cut. Plus keep in mind the true cuts now, I think Lee was on the live stream last week. He said that the true cuts are like $3,500 plus now, which is a lot um, for what it is when you have the revolution out. So there is that. Um, but yes, I agree with you, Jonathan the lighter way to making it easier and where you, where you can allow the mowers just to kind of coast down hill, hill is a nice feature. All right, uh, next up is Brent P. Says, do you have any advice for mixing cool season grass with Bermuda grass and zoysia? I have a very shaded backyard and seeded fescue in my shaded areas, which is sprouting well and giving me 30% grass. It really shouldn't be that much of a, of a challenge, Brett, because what, what you're going to find is like the fescue really shouldn't encroach too much into the Bermuda grass. And because the area that you are growing the fescue is heavily shaded, the Bermuda grass isn't gonna grow into there. So they, they should largely stay fairly separate. Um, so um, that, in other words, I'm trying to say is that there really shouldn't be a big problem. I wouldn't overseed like the entire lawn. Like if you have a part of the lawn where the Bermuda gets plenty of sunlight, I wouldn't plant fescue there. I would leave that only in the areas where that are, that are heavily shaded. And again, because Bermuda doesn't like shade, doesn't do well in shade, the fescue really shouldn't have a problem being the alpha grass in that part of the uh, of the lawn. All right, so good. That's a, that's a great question, uh, um, Brett. I appreciate that. Um, next up, we have uh, James Smith. He says, Ron, uh, if you if you top dress this year, uh, give me a ring. I can come down from Rally and help and see my mom. Two birds, <laughs> one one stone. Man, listen, you will you will like you won't like you stop you stop watching the content if you come down here and top dress, man. I'm telling you, it's it's a lot of work. Twelve thousand square feet is a lot of work to top dress. It takes like the, between Alex and I, it takes like a morning. It takes like a it takes a good three maybe four hours to uh to do it it's 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 a lot of work man it's a lot of work i'm telling you it's like it's a lot of fun when you first start it's a ton of work it's a lot of work when you first start but then like two hours into it you kind of question your you know you question your, your what you were what you were doing especially on a, this is on a larger lawn anyway and then really at that point it's kind of like granted, i've never been pregnant but it's kind of like pregnancy right there's only one way out of it you got to finish you got to finish it you got to you got to see it through so um so yeah it's a lot of work, James. I don't want you to be mad at me, so I don't know if I, I'll invite you down to come top dress salon because you'll. It's a lot of work. It is a ton, a ton, a ton of work. All right. A uh, Will Shear says, um, "I'm low on iron. Should I go with a spray or a granular? A uh, granular would be better if you're trying to build up iron levels in the soil. Spray is better if you're looking to get like you know a faster results. If you try to get a quicker, a faster." Um, Visual response, you're going to get a faster visual response from a foliar spray than you will from a granular uh, product. You said, also, I have a good amount of annual ryegrass in my front yard and it's outnumbering my tall fescue. Is it too late to overseed Tennessee? Uh, no, it shouldn't It shouldn't be. Um, you still should be able to overseed Will, but I guess what are you trying to do? Are you trying to, you'd overseed with more fescue? Is that what the, what the goal would be? I mean, you can... Yeah, it's, just, it's not too it's not too late to, to to do that, but I don't know that you overseeding is um, going to really displace the annual ryegrass. I mean, you can give it a shot and see, um, but no, it's still early enough in the season that if you wanted to, you could. Um, Will should also ask: Is Lawn Synergy a reputable product? 
can't say. I, I've never used any. I don't. I don't. I don't even know what they really offer. I've never. I've heard of the brand, but I've never actually looked any any of their product offerings to know what what they offer. And I because I mean, I've never used it, I can't really say um, how well it works or doesn't work. I mean, what I would just tell you is look at the reviews from people that do use it and kind of go from that. Because I've never. Um, again, I've, I've never even used their products to be able to tell you. All right. So of course, you'll need to come up to RTP and help on my. See, that, see, that, that, this is the problem. See, that, and that's the thing. I know I'm not gonna do that. Like, you're gonna tell me I gotta go travel to go like top restaurant. See, that's it's it's a it's a hard no. It's, pr it's really not gonna happen. So I don't want to have to return that favor. So probably not. Probably not, James. I think we've um I think we've we figured this out. All right. Um, and then last question, last comment of the evening, and um. Brett P says, tagging on to Will's question, which lasts longer, uh, granular or spray iron? Is there a difference? Yeah, so granular will, again, you're building up levels in the soil, so it tends to stick around longer than a foliar spray. Uh, they, they both have their advantages. So a good example, if you're trying to build up iron levels in the soil and you can, you can apply a granular fertilizer that has iron in it, that's a good thing. If you are trying to get a, a fast pop, a fast pop of color, then literally you, you spray liquid iron and in two days, you're gonna see a visual response. Also, if you have a soil that is, um, that's highly alkaline, so the pH is above 7.2, you know, um, that is where if you use a granular uh, micronutrient product like the iron, even if, you're putting it, even if you're putting it in the soil, it's not gonna be readily available for uptake by the grass, whereas a foliar spray will still work. So that's a, a, an, an area where Foliar sprays have an advantage over over granular, but they, they I would say one is better than the other. It really depends on what you're trying to accomplish, um, which determines which way you want to go. In my case, I primarily do foliar iron sprays outside of my fertilizer application in the spring and in the fall, which is the twelve zero twenty four, which contains iron in it. So, hope that helps, sir. And on that bombshell, I think that is our last comment of the evening. I will cue the outro music, guys, gals. Hopefully you guys got some good value out of the live stream um, this evening. I really do appreciate you guys watching the content. Again, we have a new option for the cool season folks um, in the form of Velocity PM for controlling Poanua in your ryegrass, fescue, bent grass. It does work in some cultivars of Kentucky bluegrass, but you gotta test it. Um, and this one little bottle will treat seven acres. So it goes a long way. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out with me. Hope you guys are having an amazing lawn. If you're looking for the best products to get the lawn of your dreams that your neighbors are absolutely gonna envy, be sure to check out the Golf Course Lawn Store. We have uh, products in stock and shipping quickly. Have a lot of fun playing in the, weekends, in the lawn this weekend, and I will see you guys next week. Take care.